Call the meeting to order at 631. This will go by the clerk's official computer. So we're going to start off with call me in order introductions. We called it to order. We'll do introductions. We'll start with the video guy. Hi, video guy. You want to? Hi, I'm Julianne Mills. I'm going to take notes this evening. Thank I'm you for doing Margaret. that for us. You're welcome. Thank you. Dan MacArthur from the uh, from the study committee, Marlboro member. Uh, Dwight Borum, the Wardsboro representative. John Everett with his consultant committee. Rich Warner representing or from Dover. Selena Romo from Malda. Jill Dean representing Wardsboro. Randy Capitani from Dover. Mike Murphy from Wardsboro. Lucy Gratway from Marlboro. And we should have a Laura Sabay sitting over there. Do you want to introduce yourself or not? You don't have to. Sure, I can. My name is Anita Raphael. I'm from Wardsboro. And I'm here for um, the third or fourth item on the agenda. Third or fourth. Continue work on our questions? Uh, no, it's communication, the communication plan. Oh, communication oh, plan. I'm sorry. I didn't uh, Anita is here that. because she's oh, the first so yeah, we're going to get you real quick. Yeah. There's no hurry. I'm okay. here for the duration. I rode with these guys. So. Oh, <laughs> so you're, not old cat, <laughs> you're stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice to meet you. I heard a lot of nice things you. about you. <laughs> okay, so we've done introductions. I did name cards. I was, um, one of the things that had been suggested after one of our meetings was that um, they wanted to see the officers kind of more together because we're supposed to be acting as the leaders. And I thought it would be nice to just mix people up a little bit. And also, I thought this was a good setup if we did have public and for the recording. And, and the um, I've actually had several people comment that they are watching portions of the video. Mm -hmm. There's a few of you that they really want to know and sign contracts. I told them I'm all your agents and they can go through me. <laughs> Approved minutes of the August 25th meeting, action required. So we had the minutes. Everybody should have gotten a copy of them. There's Mike. I just didn't get a response from you, but everybody else, I got a response that they received everything this time. So hey, Laura, get you. Uh, side. Sorry. No problem. So we just did introductions, and we introduced you. Okay. <laughs> um, so if I... Is there any comments? If not, I entertain a motion to approve and second. I, I just have a, uh, one correction yeah. on the spelling. Uh, Go ahead, the second item at 640, principals invited to share info about respective schools. Principal should be P A L S. Oh. The principal is your pal. Is your pal. Mm -hmm. Well, they are our pals. And then mm -hmm. um, just questions. Not really for the minutes, but Marlboro handout, Wardsboro slideshow, and Dover had a slideshow. We were going to get copies of those sent around. There was did, did direct get links. Those? I put them as links in the minutes. Oh, that's what was at the bottom. There was. They were at the bottom, and they were also highlighted in the minutes. So we should well, have been able to shame, click shame on, on me for not clicking. So, but no, they were. I can. Okay. Yeah, okay. They were. <laughs> okay. No, I didn't even look. I didn't even see I that. Was that's worried that they weren't going to work. So that's good. Yeah. Because. <laughs> okay. The minutes are on WCSU's website too, so if anybody out there in TV land is wanting to see the presentations, they can go to the WCSU website. Laura had actually sent an email asking if it could be more prominent mm -hmm. on the, and it actually isn't too hard to find. Um, so they are there. I did see them, but I didn't open them because I had I was there. But so other than that, ladies, no, I, those are the only things any, I had. Anybody else? Okay, if not with that one um, correction, which you did very good, that's only one if he's an editor. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. That was a lot of pressure. He may be off in your job soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll entertain a motion. I move we approve them as uh, edited by Randy. Okay, so we got a motion by Dan. Second. Jill seconds it. Is there any more discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any abstentions aye. or any objections or no's? Okay, um, communication plan, possible action to approve. So we kind of had set up a, a quasi subgroup of Laura, Randy, Jill, Selena, and was there somebody else, Laura? Laura? Four of us. Yeah. Right, so you there, got it. that's a four. Yeah. And I know there were some emails going around about um, talking to some people, so I'm not sure who your spokesman is, but somebody take it away. I guess it's me. Um, <clears throat> Well, some people ended up being Anita because we talked at the meeting two weeks ago about Anita who's done work with Jill and uh, the Wardsboro Library and worked 
as a freelancer for me at the Deerfield Valley News, so we, we know some of our work and it's very capable and confident. So I reached out to Anita and um, you know she was very interested and then I sort of dropped the ball and didn't get back to her for about 10 days because I got busy with other things. Uh, and we did communicate yesterday. Um, she is still interested. We both thought it would be a good thing for her to come to the meeting tonight as did the other people on the mm -hmm. subcommittee and everybody else weighed in. Um, I think what we're Wrangling isn't the right word, but still trying to just figure out is what exactly we, we can have her do and what we can afford to have her do. And um, Anita will give us a cost estimate for her time, but she wanted to come to the meeting and get a feel for it first, right? That seemed fair. And that's kind of where we're at. So there should be, I sent as an attachment to everybody, there was a memo <coughs> from Bill Anton, the superintendent, on a budget. And if you go to that budget, <coughs> Um, which I had all lined up so that I could get right to everything as we got to it, and now I can't find anything. So it looks as though, um, from John, we got a, an estimate, John Everett from 8 to 12,000, figuring around 10, but going on the high of 12. Um, video is 1,400. The PR, figuring 60, 60 hours at $30 an hour, would be around 2,000. 2500 for financial modeling, and that was from Bill top contacting a person who's done that for other studies. Um, 2500 for an attorney, and um, 1500 flat fee for Mac 46 implementation project. Yeah, what the heck is that? I don't know. Do you know what that's the Vermont School Board Association. Oh, so oh. they take their cut. No, they take a fee, right, and then they charge us so much an hour. <laughs> um, there was that 140 an hour, yeah, I think, was what, and then travel time they charge us. Mm -hmm. But they um, charge 140 an hour and a flat fee. That's interesting. I didn't yeah. realize that. Oh, god, yes. So mm -hmm. it looks as though we have the money in there still. It still allows us money, um, or it looks as though we have around the, the $2,500 or the $2,000. $2, and yeah. we're actually, you know, we have $20,000, so there's $100 left there to throw us go to. That's a slush fund. Or something. It gives us room, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, and that isn't going to last for you. It's not going to last for you. That's three quarters of an hour if John now, runs over. Yeah. Day. Do you, um, so I don't know, do we want to, do we want to maybe postpone this and you can see what happens during this meeting and then towards the end we can come back to this and then you can maybe have seen what's happening or? Sure, but if I just may, I did get an email um, from Randy which the four point scope of work um, um, and so that is what I'll be thinking about while you all are talking to um, just keep his four points in mind. Did you want to tell them what those were or you want me to? Or uh, Since you have it and I don't, I'd right. and so, appreciate it if you did. Uh, in uh, Randy's email to me when we were discussing this, he said that the scope of work would be advance the meeting promotion via press release, social media posts, front porch forum, email blast distribution, and press and school newsletters. Uh, that would be to get the public in these chairs. Uh, attend the meeting, which obviously that's a no-brainer. Post meeting promotion with video link uh, posting. So once the minutes would be prepared and the video would be available, I would go through these same venues and make it known that that's available. And then the final point that he had for scope of work was ensure that all materials reviewed and produced by the committee are posted on a website or a separate website. So to uh, respond to that, I created um, some preliminary determinations that have to be sort of in place before any PR work can begin because as you all know from your own careers, PR work has this sort of accordion effect <laughs> that the bigger it gets, the bigger it gets. Um, and we're, as we're working in a budget and, and, and so forth and we're kind of planning hours and times, these things have a tendency to crank up in the final a month or two of activity and all of a sudden that's all you're doing um, as a full-time job. So aware of that, to try to keep that stuff in line, I prepared um, a list of 11 preliminary determinations. So I can leave this copy with the subcommittee or, or I can leave copies from all of you and we can talk about this at the end or at next time or in between time. Whenever, but in the meantime, I'm happy to just sit here and see what it is y'all do. Well, I, we must well do it now. I can go make copies. Yeah, if you got. Copies. I have copies. Oh, great! Cool. Not that my printer had a lot of ink in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and those those four points, I you got were actually from Laura who. Four, oh, okay. And I just forwarded them on. Right. Those are so we points. don't need the answers to these. The committee yeah. can come up with we the answers to these, but I prepared these 
based on other PR work I've done so that we know um, the, I, I guess the boundaries is the right uh, word on that. Got enough copies? Did I short one? So uh, this is something I had mentioned to Randy, which was to determine a single point of contact. I will confess one of my shortcomings is that I am daunted by the multiple voices of committees. So that's a quickie, determine who I'm talking to. Uh, determine a person in policy to deal with public comments, to engage in replies and discussions, positive and negative. An official spokesperson and that person's liabilities are my liabilities. Um, I don't want to waste your nickel getting into long harangues with people on social media. Um, <laughs> or I'm not I actually authorized to be your spokesperson. I'm just your kind of ghostwriter for what it is y'all are doing. So you'll need to come up with who's going to talk back. Um, determine a primary purpose for the PR, the highest priority. If it's to get the public engaged and involved, then that's a very good target. If it's something else, then I'd like to know what that is. A, a PR always has to have a primary target, otherwise you're always straying from the line. Uh, and of course, there would be a sublist, number four, of uh, other purposes, other goals you're trying to determine. Determine a procedure for logging and the preservation of the documents. Because this is a public thing, at some point somebody's going to need to know what pe there's flies in here. <laughs> what pe if I get flies? If you would like the, uh, <laughs> I need somebody to stand next to me with the <laughs> Um, determine a procedure for keeping track of the documents. I know how critically important that is in public meetings. Determine a list of media types, specifically with any associated costs, if any. If you're going to have a separate website, obviously that's going to cost money. And disturbing the types of distribution. Can it be the same if it's going to public government or private entities, or does it have to be reformatted, repackaged for everything you're sending out? Determine a plan and schedule for monthly, maybe, evaluation of the effectiveness of the campaign. Uh, all campaigns need to have some measure of effectiveness. Is it working or isn't it? And what would be the criteria for effectiveness? Um, as you all know, public meetings go on for decades with nobody in the public attending, so it, it happens. Uh, determine a plan for frequency of interactions and schedule of interactions. You want stuff in the paper every week, every day, once a meeting, once a month. Do you want postings on the Facebook page every day, once a week, once a month, five postings a day. So there needs to be some kind of a volume, <laughs> quantity, measure, like what, what do you want? Um, determine a format for accessing availability to outside links and sources. My personal feeling is that there's no point reposting what's posted. Uh, if it's up somewhere, then just hook on to it, unless you critically feel that it all has to be imported and reposted as original content, so it ends up being extremely time-consuming. Uh, compose a brief scope of work, which Randy did, or which this constitutes in the end, and a letter of understanding for start date, finish date, um, add-ons, compensation, payment schedule, and nullification clauses, and establish a specific email source mailing address from which this all originates. Obviously, it shouldn't be my personal Gmail account, um, and so there should be a single source from which everything originates connected to PR. So that's what I got. And as I said, I don't need the answers to those now. Yeah. No, and that can be the subcommittee's job to um, arrange all that. No, this is great. And I mean, I, I will just, a couple of things I'll echo real quickly. The single point of contact is absolutely critical. I can tell you from the media side, when you work with a committee and you have five different people coming in with the same thing, that's the last thing we want. I mean, we've literally thrown people out of our office because three of them come in hour after hour from one another. So that's critical. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to decide that now. Maybe we want to. Um, I mean, maybe I, we need to talk yeah. about in general whether I, we're moving forward I think on this. We, we allotted some time for this, and we're going to ask her to, you know, Laura's concern and some other concerns have been, you know, basically is the public aware of what's going on and make sure that the public right. is aware. I mean, I don't know if the purpose is to get the public here. Because if we're making them aware of what's going on, maybe they don't have to come here. So, but at least n let them know that what's going on. So if they want to come, they can come mm -hmm. here. Yeah. So I, I'd like to just run through this because I don't think we need to quite be as, I mean, just looking at like number two, uh, determine a policy. We're not going to have a policy. 
you know, we're, we're a short-term group. It's just going to, you know, none of us. Uh, well, I would disagree no, with that, I Rich. Well, I, no. would, I would say the reason for that is because if something pops up on Facebook and you all see it and you all reply, you're Maybe. asking well, for trouble. Well, here, here, I'm going to take care of that right now. Any public media forums, there's nobody on this committee that has the authority to respond to that. We respond to that as a committee. So if people can put anything they want on Facebook, I see that coming back to the board and it's being dealt with as a board. And I don't know if that's a policy, but that's, you know, none of us are a member outside of this group, but we're not having a meeting. We're, not, we're nothing. We're just people. Um, you know, it's the same on the school boards. And it's the same on the select boards, unless you're acting as a board. So there, if somebody puts something on, if we decide to post something somewhere and somebody says, I don't understand this, this is stupid, please respond, it's not going to be a response and maybe that needs to be up front there. We can't respond to stuff as a, as a group. None of us have the authority to speak for the group as a whole. The group speaks as a group. Well, well I would unless, disagree with unless that. Unless the group yeah. assigns authority. I, I, we can discuss it as a group, but at the end, someone should be the point person. Yeah. To be out there answering those questions. Would be the chair. I'll give you another example. And, and Anita needs to be able to say, so and so from the group said this. And then we also, as a group, need someone to handle questions when we get to the point where we have media in these meetings. Mm -hmm. And when my reporter or somebody from the reformer said, calls with a follow up question, they need to know who to call. So that we need to have that, Rich. It can't be me. And it can't right. be Anita. Can't no, be it absolutely cannot be Anita. It has to be somebody from this group, whether it's you or Dwight or Laura. It really can't be me either because I work mm -hmm. in media, but it needs to be somebody from this group. And should public discussion <clears throat> escalate on social media, which is what happens on social media, then at some point you're going to want to mm -hmm. engage. Uh, <clears throat> using those forums is an expectation of a response. Yes, well, absolutely. So, and I agree with you that perhaps it can be stated that not a decision will be made, mm -hmm. but there should be an acknowledgement that the comment has been recorded and thank, will be thank, discussed. Thank you for your comment and will be brought up at the next meeting. I right. Think that can be a right. Somebody, still has, fine, to, somebody still has to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's still has the, to post That's that. the responding part. Right. Right. Okay. Oh, when I thought you meant responding, be. like I thought oh, you meant a response. Oh, you're all washed up. That's acknowledge not the way it is. Oh, right. no, 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 you have to acknowledge it. You can use that as a way to steer people to the meetings. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Anita yeah. could acknowledge. Yeah, I mean, that's right. But if you say the same thing 50 times, then it just looks like it's a yeah, that's no, reply. Good. no, that's totally no good. And then it looks like there's nobody there. There, I'm going to make a suggestion that we, as a study committee, authorize both Rich and Dwight to make these responses. One of them may be out of town or whatever. Communicate amongst yourselves, decide which one it's going to be, and what you're going to do. And then, so that way, two different names would be. So too. That's just, I'm throwing that out just so we can make some progress. Right, and I can certainly be the point person and alert you. Like, hey, there's something on there you ought to take a look at. If you're not, you know, on a personal level, I can call you up or text you and say, you know, there's a thing there you might want to, good or bad. I mean, it, it's we're assuming it's all bad stuff, but some of it might be yeah. good, you know. Well, and, and this is a path we maybe don't want to go down right now, but then we also have the question, where will that social media be? You guys in Marlboro are using Front Porch Forum. I can tell you in Dover, nobody uses that. Just pop up a page. So we're going to have to create a Facebook yeah. page. So now there's two places that somebody has to monitor right off the bat. And then, I don't know if the WCSU website allows for commenting or not. If it does, then somebody has to monitor that. If it doesn't, it does. mm -mm. that makes it easy. I think there's contact information. So somebody would have to send an email, which really isn't what Anita is talking yeah. about at all. By having a Facebook page and all this other, a website and email blasts, are we opening up communication avenues that we don't want to have? Should, we, should all the, I think what Rich is saying, I kind of agree now, talking about this, shouldn't the communication take place at this meeting, not in social media? And if we have all these avenues, we're opening up communication. I, I think if we want to be truly responsive to the people of our towns, we, we need to go beyond these four walls. I, you know, well, I agree, mm -hmm. but can it just be a notification? Mm -hmm. This is what's happening. Mm -hmm. Don't respond to this email, mm -hmm. but come to the meeting or, you know, understand that if you, you know, you send a, a request or a question, it's going to be answered at the meetings. And, and maybe that could be like a header. I, I, I understand what you're saying. And, and in principle, I agree with it. The, the thing is, if we go the social media route, there are expectations in social media. It's, it's totally manageable. Huh? It's totally manageable. It's man it is totally, it's manageable. totally manageable. I mean, it is. You know, okay. because if you have users for folks that do or don't, I mean, you know, it can be seamless. We can have a couple of people that are authorized but to I just think, give this. But you know, somebody has to respond, is my point. Yeah. 
They well, there are people here that are good on social media. I am one. You are. You so it would not are. be. It would not be. Laura is responding. It would be the pages responding. You know, there may be other people who are also willing right. to play that role. Yeah, you can have a moment. Can you have multiple administrators Yes, users, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, you have a couple of ownership, yeah. ownership on yeah. the page. Yeah. But um, I didn't mean to provoke a long discussion on it, but I am aware no, that... No, but I think it's valuable. No, it's, 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 it's we, we have to have discuss. these discussions, and, and, and having you as the outside person, you see it differently, too. Right. right. And that's... No, I think it's very important, and I want to continue this, because I'd like to be able to settle this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or settle as much as we can, and even if we get it down to... You know, we're all in agreement. We're going to do something. We just haven't ironed it out yet. Then. Right. Well, but for example, if you avoided social media and just did a blog that linked to the WCSU site, and then things were created on a blog, and that blog link in a blog is free, and you could have that everywhere, and then there could be no comments posted on the blog that haven't been previously reviewed. So the comments would come in to me. I would get the comments. I'd bring them to the next meeting. I'd say, here are the comments. What are your responses? Get the responses, and then, then you can say yes, post that one. No, don't post that one. Yes, I want. So a lot of blogs have screened comments. So somebody just can't type a comment in on the blog without it being reviewed first, and that's an easy out to avoid the social me the pitfalls of social media. Is the other issue is that's that question's not going to be answered for two weeks because we meet every two weeks. Right. Yeah, I think I think it's yeah. a good point. I mean, there might be a contact person she could mm -hmm. get a little, a little quicker. To, to I, I know, before there also meeting. could be an explanation at the at the top saying questions are answered in in the meetings by the committee and not individually. So please, because well, of, because we want to keep this uh, above board and public, mm -hmm. this is why we have to do this. And you know. We're, we're reaching, the, I thought the idea was more to keep people informed so that people don't say, oh, I never knew you had a meeting. So mm -hmm. we, we could say, well, we were out there. Um, it doesn't mean that we have to, you know, again, answer every question the minute it comes in. It's, mm -hmm. um, I, I just have some issues because Dwight and I may even see things different. And I'm not the committee. No, there's not one person here. And I think the answer needs to be from the group because it's not me deciding the answer or, or Dwight or even, you know. Um, yourself that that's what I'm thinking I have no problem if we're there just letting people know but we just have a disclaimer in there that because of the, the meeting and because of the committee we cannot just give individual answers Randy I think if you know it's just like at a school board meeting if your reporter calls up to clarify something I'll clarify something but I'll also say well that wasn't discussed or I can't answer that or that didn't come up and I, I see that as a different thing well, my reporter knows who to call that's right. So we I, and we can make that person. But right. if your reporter called up and said, "Hey, at the next meeting, do you think that they're going to talk about, uh, or at the next meeting, can you know what's the answer going to be?" Yeah, no, nobody I, can, yeah. Say can't that. You right. can't speculate. You can't say that. So that's speculate. that's where I'm concerned. Can we just let John weigh in a little bit because he is our consultant and mm -hmm. and he's done these before. Yes. And I don't know what the like the Wyndham Central Red study did. So. I'm yeah. going to eat my sandwich also. I'm really sorry. Well, as long as we're enough for everybody. <laughs> I didn't. All actually, the flies are going to be. Yeah, good. Well, that'll yeah. get the flies away. <laughs> 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 there they all go. The Red Study didn't do new social media, really, at all. So this is um, this is actually even new territory for me, you know, getting involved in social media. And I, but I do want to echo the phrase that if you get into social media, there is a different expectation about response. That, that, that is really important to be able to do. Personally, I think I think that and I hate to say it this way, but safest for both the citizens and you is to use a blog format. I love blogs. Mm -hmm. Can we, we? We did a similar thing on our our, yeah. in our school district website, where we had a suggestion box that served basically the same function, and uh, people would send in their their questions, and then we would route them where they needed to go. Uh, but in this case, they could go back to the blog. An answer, but, it, but the blog could talk about exactly quote you. you know, we're doing every two weeks or whatever. So as soon as the I can get there, it'll be out. Yeah, Dan and then Randy. Yeah, I guess my question for you, Anita, is um, somebody mentioned front porch forum, which is used widely in Marlboro. Is there a way to have front porch front porch forum say uh, a new item has been added to the? Act 46 Study Committee at its blog site, so Absolutely. there's not a way. So it's an, yes. a way to notify people, mm -hmm. but not really. There's no way. You could actually. Yeah, I was thinking. I was going to echo that. You could do the same thing with Facebook. Mm -hmm. yeah, or yeah. Laura could share with her. Yeah. You know, friends, or I could share with mine. Hey, there's a new item on this blog. 
if you're interested, go check it out. Yeah. And then we could still have some Facebook exposure without yeah. being exposed, nice. if you will. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I think, um, you know, there we could authorize, if we come to an agreement, I mean, if it's a technical question like, hey, where's the next meeting? I mean, that's mm -hmm. an answer. Right. I think yeah. that we can, but hopefully we'll do well enough that those kind of questions won't, <laughs> won't come out. Or, you know, hey, I can't hook up to the, the uh, Act 46 website at the state of Vermont. Right. It could be that there's no escalation of feelings one way or the other on this whole thing, but you have to be prepared that there could be. Yeah. That's the only reason I wrote that, because mm -hmm. you just never know. And, and it, it brought up a really good, I don't think anybody's upset about it. Or, you know, I mean, I think it brought up some good discussions, some good thoughts. Huh? Yeah, it's valuable. I mean, I honestly think that nine-tenths of the questions that are going to come through are things are going to be things that people have missed that we've already talked about, and it's only going to be a matter of redirecting. Be like, oh, we talked about that on 825. Here's our minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I really think that's really I think you're probably be. right. You know, mm -hmm. people are going to be playing catch-up, particularly at first. No. And I think that's where... So, if, if we, I can walk through this so we can stay on track. Um, number one, determine a single point of contact within the committee. I'd, I'd like to have it be um, the chairman, then the, if he's unavailable, the vice chairman and the, the clerk, if everybody's good with that. Yeah. You okay with that? No, you guys are going to be the single point of contact. This uh, is Anita's contact. Right, contact. right. So if, okay. if she can't get hold of me and she needs something, she can go to Dwight. Or, but she will give you the ways to contact us, the three of us. Right. So if you all want something, you talk to him first. That's and right. Not and, me. and I'll go to you. But if you Got need it. something and I'm not available. Got it. Uh, determine a person and policy deal with public comments. I mean, did we kind of take care of that? Without us, uh, you know, if, if we want to do a policy, we got to post it somewhere. We got to, you know, warn. I, I think we pretty much took care of it. We'll just try to. Yeah. Keep are you, are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. A blog. If it becomes a situation, we can deal with it. Right. I just right. want you to know that I'm not going to take any initiative to respond to anything, good or bad. Mm -hmm. that, that's not. I, I think other than if if there's a, a technical question, you know, where is something right. located, and, and right. if you need help with that, you can contact me, and I'll. Right. Okay. Determine a primary purpose of the PR. The highest priority, what is PR supposed to accomplish? I think it's supposed to keep the public informed as mm -hmm. to what we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Is mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. any? Absolutely. Yeah, I think yep. so. And, and I think, uh, if I remember the discussion from the last meeting, it's in a proactive way, too, not just not really. this happened, but this is about to happen. Yeah. So, so if people can know, I don't know what, you'll know better than I how many days ahead of time, but every time there's a meeting or, uh, or any avenue for the public to be engaged, let them know ahead of time through all our different media right. outlets. So Randy's deadline for me is 5 o'clock on Tuesday. And if the meeting is Thursday following, how soon do I have this agenda to say coming up at the meeting will be? I just can't say there's a meeting. I have to say the reason yeah. you should come is because we're going to talk about. So where are you on posting your agendas if I have to meet, for example, just for example, his deadline. Other, other publications that you might want to be in and we'll identify those. So the the meetings meet. have been warned. We, we determine the dates of the meetings through November. Um, so that covers our warning issue. The problem with me doing the agenda is I did an agenda right after our last meeting, and then other things came up. This PR thing came up. Um, there was something from John, a, a question about the Vernon, Jamaica we're going to cover later. Um, Dan had a request on the agenda. So I was trying to hold things just a couple days in advance. But what if, if everybody's in agreement <coughs> that you, if anybody has any special requests, you get it to me by Sunday night, then I can get the agenda out on Monday previous to the meeting? Right. Because I just can't write there's right. a meeting. Right. No, I have well, to write there's a meeting and they're going to cover. Mm -hmm. sure. To Anita's point, to do it in a timely manner for the Deerfield Valley News, and I can only speak for our own publication, we actually need it two Tuesdays mm -hmm. before the meeting. Right. Because right. we come out today. Mm -hmm. right. So it's if to have that information in today's paper when most people aren't getting it until tonight, or tomorrow morning in their mailbox, the week, week it before. needs to be the week before. So can I make a, maybe, maybe this might help a little bit strategically, um, if Dwight and Rich and I agree to, after the meeting is over, we take a hot minute, the three of us, and do a rough agenda before we even part ways, mm -hmm. and that way it can go out to the committee. I, I think like that's... That, 
Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that's reasonable well, because you can always change. Well, yeah. you understand right. that right, it has to be able to be adjusted. Well, and right. even like if we get it done, you know, mm -hmm. tonight we take ten minutes and we do a quick yeah. agenda and we send it out and then we say, okay, everybody, if you have any additions, comments, anything you want to bring up, let you know, email Rich by Sunday night. So we have Thursday to Sunday to be able to respond quickly and then make a change that way. That Monday, which is a two Mondays, I know. Mm -hmm. Prior. Prior. With that, yeah. Miss um, Danny, it's, it's really hard to, to have a real agenda, an honest agenda, that far in advance. There could be a notification of where it's posted. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and the meeting mm -hmm. materials. That would make sense. That makes more Right. Sense. But as long as it contains like one or two talking points, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, the just gist of the next meeting is going to be yeah. yada yada. Mm -hmm. and, the, and an agenda will be posted. Exactly. Such well, that's place. standard, of course. Yeah. Laura, you had a comment? No, that's exactly what okay. I was going to say. We should make sure that all, all of the meeting materials are easily located. Mm -hmm. You know, like, okay, here, click here, you can get yeah. everything that you saw. Yeah. yeah. Are you rolling your eyes at me? No, she's making pig noises over here. No, no she I'm said boink. Oh, boink. I thought you said oink. Like pigs like boink. The, you click the thing. I thought you were thinking that. Do you want to the gavel? Please. Okay, are we good with that then? So yeah. I, I think moving on to... Uh, determine a sublist of purposes, itemized and important. I, I think it's pretty much the one item, right? The, mm -hmm. the primary purpose. Is there a secondary purpose? A secondary purpose might be a, a single finding aid to everything to do with the committee. A secondary purpose might be to um, create a, a media only access point where only the media can have access to certain things for their purposes. It might be to create a photo archive. It might be to create a statistical archive. It might be a thousand things. I think so. the single point of all things related to this might mm -hmm. not be a bad idea. Right. That sounds good to mm -hmm. me. Right. And I don't think mm -hmm. it can be all things related to Act 46. No, no. No, but to our group. To this with, committee. Yeah. Right. And then the links are to the other things. Like if you want to know about yeah. other studies, here's other studies. Yeah. Got it. Okay. We're all good on that? Yep. Yeah. So we're on number five. Procedure for logging and preservation of documents and actions for PR. Isn't that just, that would be on whatever blog, somebody. I'm right, but I don't know if you, like sometimes you have to create paper documents that are in a file somewhere in case the internet crashes or the website crashes or whatever. So I didn't know if there were laws for public meetings or, I don't know, I'm asking. Well, that that's why I'm saying is that there's not going to be back and forth in this because it's not meeting, so it would just be, the stuff we create that would be paper would be our minutes and any handouts that go with the minutes, right? I, I have a thought yeah. that might do this. And it, um, it, it ties in with number 11. Establish a specific email source or mailing address from which the PR mm -hmm. originates. So if we set something up for her, an email account that would be through the WCSU mail server, mm -hmm. then it would all archive there automatically, right? Mm -hmm. I assume that's all archived. So that would take care of your email issue. Or your, or your electronic data issue, if you send everything through that email account, even right. correspondence to them. Right. Um, and then if there's anything that's hard mailed out, that could go through the central office, and again, then there would be ample reason to copy it. So it's pretty simple. So we're gonna, she's gonna send an email to the central office and talk to them, and well, we gotta wait and see if she agrees. Yeah, and find out there. if that's well, yeah. awesome. <laughs> I can do that. But I'm sure they can set you up an email account. Matt used to do it, like. Got it. So that I think that was a good point, Randy. So we'll try to get everything through Wyndham Central. Yeah, right. just took two items off our agenda. Good man. Oh. Well, was. Six, determine <laughs> the list of media types specifically named and associated with cost of distribution. <clears throat> I mean, I think we, we talked about uh, the social media stuff. Do, I don't know. I'm not well, being on social well, media. First of all, public government and private entities have sometimes have different formats. So if they create three different formats for the same information, that's like crazy. So if we just say everybody's going to get the same stuff, no matter where it's being sent to, and they yeah. can do it in their yeah. own format. So that's one way. Mm -hmm. When I said specific media types, I really want to name, and we want to email out to these list of papers. We want to email mm -hmm. out to these list of um, links. We want it to go to Vermont Digger. We want it to go to Front Porch. We want it to go to Seven Days as well as other papers. Uh, we want it to go to legislative uh, partners. We want it to go to, to, for, to repos. So 
So there has to be like a master list mm -hmm. that's the set list. Everything goes to this list mm. in this format. So it, it, it. Okay, it, so can we do that list right now? Or no, no, the no, subcommittee no, can do that. No. Okay, uh, so subcommittee can we, will do that. Let's, let's let the four subcommittee do that. Yep. And I can help with that? Yes. Just if yes. Because yes. we're only yeah. trying to reach the population of five towns, right? Right. Mm -hmm. We're not Correct. trying to reach everybody yeah. in the state. So but then you bring up know, a good point. Want to let the state know what we're doing. You bring up yeah. a good point in letting legislators know <laughs> and some broader statewide media, which I hadn't really thought of at first. Yeah. But, so, well, well, but let, yeah. let the subcommittee And the other thing, though, for the subcommittee, since I'm not on it, to think about, too, is remember that Whatever we do, oh, I'm sorry. Whatever we do isn't in a vacuum too, because you know one of the concerns we've been hearing is that you know if we decide to do something and other places don't, you know they may be stuck to us or we may be stuck with them. So I think it's it's the general area too. I mean I think yeah. it's more than just the five mm -hmm. towns. Right. I think yeah. it's, yeah, it's yeah, of course we, we yes. originally talked to the the three or four supervisory unions mm -hmm. around us at least. Right, but we need that list and all right. agree so on it work. because. I, I don't want to hear a month later, oh, you forgot to send it to so-and-so, and then yeah, no, they, so we need that list. Okay, so that's number six. Number seven, um, I think, you know what, we're never going to know. It's a, it's not a long-term committee, so I, I think, you know, if we hear something, we'll bring it up in a meeting with you, right. and I think that's the best way to handle that. Yeah, if something's not working, I want to fix it. Right. Right. So if we hear that people from Marlboro can get on front porch or find something on front porch, we'll let you know. Got it. Um, eight, frequency. I, I think the interaction is the, the, the meeting dates. And we have the, the date set up to the first week of I November. So those are when we're going to meet, and that would be the time we would get together and review stuff. And we'll do like a five or ten minute little chunk for you to meet at the beginning of the meeting to let us know if there's anything that needs to be done. And if... If in the in between before the agenda is put out, you come up with something bigger you think may take more time, let us know and the officers know or let me know and I'll let them know and we'll I'll allocate a little more chunk of time. I do want to make sure that we note Anita's initial comment and, and warning about these types of things. You know, at the end, mm -hmm. you could end up with a lot of time. Yeah. So I think right. we should, we really want to just keep that in mind. Yeah. Right, and, and we want to ask you to keep that in mind. I mean, if you know, press releases and stuff goes out once a month. Is that enough? Does it have to go out twice a month? Does it have well, to go out? I think it has to go out twice a month. Yeah. Every yeah. week yeah. in between as well as a reminder yeah. of the week after. No and more than twice a month. It's all centered yeah. around meetings. Right. So yeah. free Trust me. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. No right. more than twice no, a month. I, that, that's what I was thinking. And, you know, basically pre-meeting is just, you know, here's the meeting, here's what the agenda looks like, post B and b here's the minutes, here's what they did. Got it. Yeah. What we could do, Anita, would be to ask you if, if periodically you would let us know where the two thousand dollar budget looks like it, it has uh, been spent. Too, that way we'd know we wouldn't get all the way to the end and and not have any money to go into the final flurry or whatever. So right. Well, that's what I'm I think. That's number of. nine. I mean, right? typically okay. on yeah. on projects I've worked for, not to exceed. Mm -hmm. And if we get close to the not to exceed, then we're like, uh oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. either we. Yeah stop the project or we find more money and well, we maybe you should know months ahead of time well, if we're getting close to the what, what i'd like to say is uh, under number nine is mm -hmm. part of your five minute thing can be just a little submittal to the board of how much time you spent since the last time we've had a meeting mm -hmm. and then we'll be able to keep track of it yeah and i suppose wcsu is writing these checks yes to yeah. you so right. they'll have a record of it right and startup is also. always yeah. Worse than heavy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We've got to get everything in place, Going, right. collected, yeah. collection, and startup. And you know, to me, the the brief scope of work letter, um, it'll be in the minutes. But you know, our, we'd like to have you start now, and we're projecting <laughs> that we're going to be having meetings <laughs> into December, um, and then we're going to have some public forums, and we're we're hoping to go to a vote. A town meeting day in March, so that March would be the outside, and unless, yeah, so Randy. I, I think what, and forgive me for putting words in your mouth, I think the scope of work and the brief uh, letter of understanding would be from Anita to us. Right, oh, right. Okay. Explaining what she, she thinks meeting. she's going to do, so. Right, right. because covering what? meetings is one thing, and covering the post Presentation phase is a whole nother and thing. She's, she don't put her on the spot for that tonight. She's gonna need time. To no, think about that. that's fine. I need time to think Bring about that it. to the next meeting. Or I would email it. 
If yeah. you, can you put it in an email? I certainly the, can. Yeah. Well, do it to the committee first, and if the committee's happy, then forward it. Yep. Yeah. We'll forward yeah. it to yeah. Forward it to, send it to me, and then I'll get it to our committee. Yeah, and it's not a contract. It's just a letter of agreement it's saying, here's what I think I can do. And I, I think we're going to need to make a motion to it. So hang on a second. Besides that question, do you have anybody else have any other questions? I have a question. Um, recently I heard a metaphor that I was curious about. A lot of times people talk about grassroots communication, and I, and I heard him say also grass tops, <laughs> meaning identify the leaders in the community. Oh, that's great. And uh, I, like I that. thought it was a cool metaphor. Yeah, I like yeah, that. It is. Um, yeah. And I was just wondering if you, you know, what you think about that concept of sort of more, you know, attending rotary. I don't know if there's a rotary around here, but, yep. you know, attending those kinds of things, um, if, if that's a useful Well, to your point, I mean, tool. rather than waiting for school boards and select boards and principals and educators and, and whoever, tax assessors, to go find the information, they would be on an email blast and they would get the information, mm -hmm. as Laura said, pushed to them mm -hmm. um, rather than waiting for them to go find it. And that way, they then become co-distributors because in every message to them, it's print this out, tack it on the bulletin board near you, hand this out, or repost this on your school website or your school board newsletter or whatever. So, mm -hmm. so that's where the you know the the thinking of grass tops is. I'll tell you a funny story. When we were trying to do the turnip bill thing for the last two years, every time. We did any PR on that. I sent it to Patrick Leahy and Bernie Sanders and the governor. It's like, seriously, you are wasting your time doing this? But I got a lovely letter from Bernie Sanders the other day. <laughs> you did not waste your time doing that. No. No, Say, oh, uh, uh, nice. So yeah. everybody was like, what are you doing? So I, I totally get and what you're saying. There's a tweet from I, Senator Leahy about the turnip also. Anyway. Yeah, so they all got it. And at their local offices and at their Washington offices. They got it in both places. So yes, that is that is part of the list is to create that, and I need all of that from that is inputted from you. You shouldn't like make me go scramble for that. You all know who the players are, so feed me all those people. They just start making random lists of who ought to get this stuff on an email blast, and um, and I'll make sure they're on the email blast. So and then there'll be a sign up option, obviously on a blog. I, I really like blogs. I think they're very user friendly. Either a little retro, but I think they're user friendly yeah. and um, easy to find and easy to maintain. And um, you know, there'll be a sign up thing if you sign up for our email blast. So, so let me ask you a quick question, please. Based on our discussion here, going through your eleven points, knowing that we have about two thousand dollars to spend, and I don't know if we ever discussed a rate or anything. Do you feel that's a doable? Is that a good number? Is that doable? It's close. Mm -hmm. It's close. Um, Randy had proposed 50 hour, 56 hours. I was thinking a little more in the neighborhood of 80-ish hours based on the fact that the initial collecting and putting stuff together is time consuming. It'll take me a couple of three days. And then as we discussed at the end, these things tend yeah. to yeah. like you get crazy. So, so we're, you're close. We're close. Okay, and what, what's the hourly rate that we're looking at? It's hard to say at this point. Don't, I don't need to think spot. about okay. that. Well, I mean, we just, the only reason I'm asking is, is if she wants 60 bucks an hour, even at your estimate, we're way off. So. Yeah, no. It's, I'll tell you right now, yeah, it's not 60 bucks an hour. I'm aware of what we're trying to do here is for okay. the greater yeah. good. No. So. Well, and, and knowing the, where we're on the budget, right. if we're okay, if you feel comfortable with that, we can make a motion to, um, you know, to move forward we have really nothing to make a motion on at this point mm -hmm. we need a proposal from you you need okay. a proposal yeah, from me and i'll have that for you so if you're allowed to do stuff in between meetings via emails and vote and consensus I, and we can do straw poll well what, I, what yes. I was trying to go with this is she had a number per do dollar per hour number we could say that let's just contract with her till the next meeting, knowing that it's going to be a, this many hours and you know not to exceed this amount of money, and then that well, just starts it off. Going retroactive does the same thing. Doesn't uh, it? Let's go retroactive. I, th I think she needs to think, sit through the meeting okay. and think mm -hmm. about it. Yeah, I know I would want to do that. Okay, yeah. and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. No, but you're right. That's why I came. 
but you know, and these numbers are not written in stone. Either. Right. No, I know that. That's, so, but I, I was. Let's see what if, if her feeling was she couldn't do it for that. Then we have to Your either class. scale back or. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So is there, Dan? I, I just want to say, Anita, thanks so much. This is a huge help as far as I'm concerned. We're not interviewing anybody else. There's no likelihood that we're not going to accept your proposal. So please go ahead. No, don't take it all away. Mail that to somebody else and see what happens. Okay, so we're, we ran a little over. So I'm going to ask that we move on just so that we can stay somewhat close to our and then remember it's not my fault if we go over. Uh, I think it's always the chair's fault. Yeah. Go ahead and say that now. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm sitting there. Um, so anyway, 7 o'clock, follow-up on school presentation of 825-2016 meeting. John Everett met with administrators. Um, questions from last meeting, thoughts from the committee members since presentations, and then we need to work on the just make of everything. So John, you met with the admini three administrators today for about an hour. Why don't you, sure, you so sent us, you gave us something. I sort of... Uh, put together seven points from my, my meeting with the administrators. Uh, the first one is that the Supervisor Yin, over the, uh, over the past bunch of years, has really taken on a lot of functions that have increased the coordination and efficiencies. Um, so that um, they're, really, they're really doing a lot. We call it the low-hanging fruit. A lot of the things that could be done by a unified school district, the Supervisor Yin is doing already. So um, that's a very positive thing, but it does it does take away sort of the low hanging fruit for for opportunities. It's all about opportunities for kids. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Um, they really uh, believe that we need to make sure we rep um, that we respect the culture and the expertise of each school. They even talked about things like a, a magnet kind of school. So the. Uh, Wardsboro has a focus on, on really the instructional core and the PBIS program, the Positive Behavioral Supports Program. Um, Marlboro Field Research, where, where and art is integrated into the curriculum. That's sort of what they said was their kind of big contribution. And the International Baccalaureate at Dover. So um, if, if you allowed elementary school choice, that would increase opportunities for kids uh, to go pick the schools that best fit what they needed or wanted. Um, of course, transportation becomes a huge issue now. Mm -hmm. So, um, Is that a point of transportation? Or? That was just part of that whole school choice and respecting the cultures. The third one was that they saw benefit to sharing this expertise across the schools, but they also realized that um, you can't just Take, if you're working on the International Baccalaureate, you can't all of a sudden just pump field research and switch your direction and add another layer onto what the teachers are doing. So you can't, you can't overwhelm the culture with new ideas and new, um, new expertise from the other schools. The sharing is good, but it wouldn't be like uh, a total import of all three. I mean, you can't do everything. You can't have three different cultures merge into be one super culture. It just doesn't, doesn't work that way. Um, the fourth thing is um, there would be flexibility in, um, in deploying resources when student needs changed or enrollment changed drastically at one school or the other. So if all the teachers were under the same contract, you know, there, there would be some flexibility in moving teachers around. Um, the fifth one is that there, all the principals do some of the same kind of tasks. And so they're all repeating the same activity. And with a, in a unified district, uh, some of those could be done uh, singly by the unified district. Uh, a, a simple example is approving free and reduced lunch forms. Uh, principals take a lot of time doing that. Um, there are a variety of other things that they said are sort of bureaucratic in nature, which would then give the principals more time to devote to educational leadership. Uh, leadership stability was the sixth point. Um, I think a, a, a fair amount of that had to do with uh, the superintendent and that the superintendent would be able to give them more focus uh, because, again, there wouldn't be dealing with three different uh, repetitions of different things that the superintendent has to attend to. 
but could work with the principals more as a whole on some of these. Um, the, the seventh one was really a wonder, a uh, wonder about the change of the relationship that the principals had um, with their school boards and with their community, given that it goes to one board. So, you know, there, we just talked about that quite a bit, wondering, so what would be the difference there? What would be the impact on what they currently have? How, how that change would impact, especially their connection to the community? Um, superintendent added, uh, thinking about the unified district, we might really be able to have a very robust pre-K program. So that was one of the things that he thought might be a real benefit to uh, to unified district. So this is not exclusive. I'm still working with them. Uh, I'm going to write up what I heard them say, give it back to them so that they can say, well, we didn't really mean that, or you forgot this. So I really want to make sure that we end up with a document that is as close to their voices as possible. So, Tarkin Sweet reported what they did. Questions for John? That was really helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, more of a comment, really. Mm -hmm. um, I think your point number seven with the principals was really interesting about how their interaction with the community and their board is going to change. And, you know, we kind of, at the last meeting, said a lot of the culture issues and the program issues would be left to the new unified board and wouldn't really fall under our task, if you will. But, but that one is really important to keep in mind and consider as we go through this process, I think. You know, and I think that's all in the back of our minds, but they obviously have expressed it to you, too. Mm -hmm. So I, I do, I, you know, I can say as with the other hat that, you know, the, since we started discussing Act 46 at Wyndham Central and at Dover School, and I'm sure the Marlboro School and the, the Wardsboro School is the same thing, and everybody feels that their culture, you know, and their school, and, you know, there's certain things that we all do that we've done for years and it's ingrained in us, and, and we really, and that's important. And, you know, one of the things that um, I keep hearing when I talk to real Act 46 zealots that really love it, you know, is that what is the community, though, you know, and when you define your community. So it's no longer going to be the Dover or the Marlboro or the Wardsboro community. It's going to be that three-town com com combined community, you know, because then my thing is, well, you know, where do we stop the community? You know, my joke at pre-town <laughs> meeting was, you know, are we big enough to even be a state? Should we just be one big town? And, you know, all our kids are our community, you know, and that's, that's a hard thing, too, I think, that goes with this is, you know, what is, what is a community? Um, and, and I will tell you, my experience has been that um, even under a large unified district uh, like South Burlington, uh, especially like South Burlington, where the schools are very different, um, there is a, still a close connection with that, the, the community defined as the people who send their kids to that school. And there still is that close connection with this unified system. But it's a change. It's a real different, different kind of experience. Did you, did you get a sense that they were worried that changes would be brought upon them at each school since there are differences among other? There, was there a concern there? So there was a real, we, we spent a little bit of time, actually a fair amount of time, talking about the difference between um, e equality or sameness and equity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I assured them this was about, this was about equity. It wasn't about sameness. Uh, that there's, I mean, even if you wanted to, you couldn't do that. Right. You could not make these cultures different. Um, I mean, say the same. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening. Good. Good. You're so, so anyway, so they, they, uh, they liked that. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they thought that was important because their, their teachers and their parents and the board members and the kids have all put lots and lots of time into building this particular culture mm -hmm. that all three were, were quite proud of the, of the specialties that they sort of saw themselves as. Did they see any benefits, you know, in the other, on the other spectrum of having other? They did, but they are so focused on their, uh, their work. Mm -hmm. And they're, they really have three different kinds of cultures about what's, what their, their real focus is. Now, the kids are the same. You know, <laughs> the, the instruction, the teachers, 
do a lot of the same kinds of things, but, uh, but the way they think about what good schooling is, what quality schooling is, is different. Okay. They didn't see harm, necessarily, as long as that whole equity wasn't turned around to be saneness. Right. Can you, please, can you please restate the Wardsboro expertise? The, the Wardsboro expertise was the, uh, let me just better look at it just to make sure I have it right. Your instructional. Well, the instructional core, really making sure that, that their literacy and math programs were very strong and they uh, worked on a, a positive behavior support, sort of an emotional development program where they really work on positive behaviors with kids. Thank you. So for John, is there any, any other questions on his report? I have a question as a member of the public. Yeah, shoot. Uh, what you just said about the conflict, not necessarily conflicting cultures, but different cultures and the inability to create a giant super culture, this sounds like something there, there ought to be models for in anthropology, studies in, in historical anthropology or contemporary anthropology about literally tribalism. So, so what are the lessons that come from outside the educational sphere that apply to what you all are trying to do? Interesting. Yeah. You know, it's the interesting thing too is when you look at our three communities, you know, Wardsboro, Dover, you know, we're, we're all different communities too, you know, with Marlboro with the college and you know, you, I think you still have more full-time residents and part-time residents. You know, Wardsboro and Dover are heavy on, on second homeowners. Um, you know, and, and just, you know, we're more considered a, a resort town. You know, Wardsboro is more considered, you know, I, I think par a partially resort town, but also there's a lot of families that have been there for years and years and generations. So it's, it's not like we're all, it, it's not like it's Dover, Stowe, and and Killington all together, you know, it, or, you know, Marlboro and wherever three other colleges are, you know, we're all a little bit different in communities too. And just defining what is that community. And, and again, that was a big point or I think in anybody that was, you know, we've been talking about there is a lot of similarity in the education and we all want the same thing for our kids. We want the best and, you know, a, a good educationally sound program that, you know, exposes them to a lot of stuff and prepares them for the future. We want to, I mean, we want to see increased opportunity. That is the goal of Act 46, is to increase opportunities. Or that's why it's on the top of the page. I saw it, and I was so pleased, Rich, but I'll keep saying it. Well, I think we have to be cautious about how we, not cautious is the wrong word, but remembering how, just thinking about how we define equity and not defining it based on being the same, but defining it on, mm -hmm. and, and being clear about that when we talk about it as well. It's like. It, yes, it's all about equity, but the equity comes from increased opportunity and acknowledgement that every child has different needs, even within our own wolf walls of a building. Like, our Marlboro School might be really amazing, but it might not work for every child that's in this building as well. And so increasing those opportunities for them to access programming in Wardsboro, or in Do you know, so that's really where that, you know, equity piece is coming in, is that every child has a, has a opportunity to have access to the education that's going to work for them. Thank you. Um, get off my soapbox. No, nope, that's good. <laughs> because it's almost kind of like the next thing that was coming up. <laughs> Thoughts from the committee members since the presentations by the, the, the administrators last meeting. Is, is there any, did anybody while, you know, they were sleeping in the middle of the night wake up and say, oh my God. <laughs> Okay, I got, oh, you got one really good. Well, I, I don't know where it falls. It might fall under um, what the report will need to contain, but it, it, we're talking about it now in terms of the cultures of the schools and the programs of the schools. And I, I don't know if there's a way to write in whatever articles of agreement we end up doing that, you know, existing programs at the three schools should be grandfathered for a certain amount of time before the new board can start messing with those. Just, just to sort of give some sort of, Familiarity, I think, maybe is the word, as the transition takes place, and maybe that's three years, maybe that's five years. Could, I just know the IB program is something that Dover's really been strong on the last three years, and it's barely getting started, and so that's going to be a tough sell in Dover to say that might go away in two more years. And that was one of the things that I was going to do that and then continue to work on our questions. Yeah. So if you can hold that maybe then. It's out there. That's all I got. Okay. <laughs> um, 
So last meeting, I started going talking a little bit about you know the the one of the elephants in the room is the um, you know the the K through yeah. whatever, and you know we've talked about the middle school. The middle school seem you know is an important part of the culture in Marlboro, and you know the choice is an important part of the culture in Dover and Wardsboro. And one of the things we were trying to do, and John had volunteered to talk to the state about, is there some way we could maintain that program? And we kind of said, you know, Laura got on the equity, equity thing in the lawsuit. But I, I want to go a different route with that, where I was trying to go, but it wasn't the time at the last meeting because I had to think it through more. One of my thoughts is, is, you know, the state is asking us to do some stuff that's foreign to a lot of us. We need to go to the state and ask them to do something that maybe is not fit in their little perfect little squares. <laughs> and my thought is, is, we have this program, it's part of the culture of this new group. Why can't we ask the state to allow us to be a little bit of a hybrid where we offer this middle school program if you want to do it, but we also will tuition you if that's what you choose. And don't shake your head because, <laughs> it, because we're not saying that if I'm in Marlboro, I can't, I have to go to the, the middle school program in Marlboro. We're saying that if you're in any of the schools, and you want to go to the middle school program in Marlboro, you can. And if you want to go tuition, whether you live in Marlboro or Wardsboro or Dover, you can be tuition wherever you want. And I think that's a question worth answering, which is different than saying, if you live in Marlboro, you got to go to the Marlboro Middle School program because we're going to maintain that. But if you go to the other two towns, so it isn't the same question. It isn't. You're, we're allowing choice or no choice. Uh, I mean, we're allowing choice. And one of the choices is to, to participate in this middle school program we have. Because we also understand that we don't have the ability to do a, a big middle school program um, that maybe could take all the, the students. And if all the students decide they want that middle school program, and I'll get to you in one second, it doesn't hurt to ask. Because we can say no and never ask the question, but if we ask the question and are told no, or maybe they'll, we'll ask the question and they say, no, we hadn't considered it that way. The questions have been different. The questions have been been the other way around. But that also gives us the flexibility to... Oh, well, actually, I, oh, I'm I sorry. recognize her. I'm sorry. And then you go after her. I always, I always think it's good to ask the question. Um, so I have a question, which is just clarification. Is this different than... Um, what I think I'm hearing you say is we would have three K-6 schools, and then there would be a Marlboro 7th and 8th grade. No, there would be a, a seventh eighth grade program. It may not always be in Marlboro. It may be moved to wherever the majority of the students are at that time, but it would be offered by this group, this new educational district, would have an available seventh eighth program, but it would be a lot different than your traditional seventh and eighth grade program because it would follow what they, they have that have worked for them, and it's another option for the student. So you would have a seventh and eighth grade pro our kids, all of our kids, would have the option of a seventh and eighth grade program that we provide or choice. Yeah. So how is that different than we're going to maintain a seventh and eighth grade? Because before we've always talked about Marlboro would be able to be a K through eight and the other schools would be a K through six. Mm -hmm. That means that if your child's in Marlboro, they have to go to the Marlboro program. We're saying no, they don't have to go to the Marlboro program. They can go to any tuition or they can take part of this new program that's part of this new district, whatever that district is. Um, let me go to Dwight and then... Uh, I, th I think you kind of answered my question because does this also give us the op opportunity to expand if we want to incre increase that middle school program and have Dover and Marlboro have that program as well? If it's, if, if it's if popular enough, it. we can have it in both schools. If so it's giving us an opportunity to expand and contract you know, where we need to. And that would be up to that new board to say, hey, wow, you right. know what? Um, there were 50 students that wanted to go, and, and you know, it just created way too much in one building, so we need to expand it. Or nobody from the, the, the south end of the district wanted it. It was everybody up north. So we got to move it to a different place because it doesn't make sense to try to get everybody. And it's, it's not a fully thought out, totally complete. It's, it's a kind of a framework of a question to ask. Dan. I will say, uh, and I'd be interested to see what the other two Marlboro members of this committee say, I think that the voters of Marlboro are 
uh, are less likely to go for a merger if it's that type of merger. Um, because we live so close to Brattleboro, and Brattleboro has such a you know wide range of programs that they can offer down there, that I think if the voters of Marlboro are looking at yes or no to uh, merge with Wardsboro Dover, uh, and seven eight uh, remains isolated within these smaller towns, as I don't think that would be as appealing to the Marlboro voters as a K through six merger with. Uh, the choice of going um, to Brattleboro primarily, which is, I think, where most of them go for uh, seven eight. So, uh, I guess, uh, and I guess I should repeat again uh, ad nauseum that that Marlboro is also considering an alternative structure, which would be a, a pre K through eight structure here. So, um, so that comp further complicates it. But I guess what I'm saying is, in terms of Marlboro's engagement. I think we might be less likely rather than more likely to to get the votes. Selena, do you? Well, or, yeah, I'm sorry. I have a, Randy. But if they want to comment first on the answer, I'm fine with that. Uh, my only, so I just, we had been talking about some other things. Bill actually brought up to us at one point, like what about offering a, you know, a seventh and eighth kind of being a private entity, like you starting your own middle school. So kind of similar, but uh, idea to what you had, you know, where it could be still K-6 choice here, but still have a junior high program and it being its own entity. The concern is that came out of that, you know, conversation was the longevity of it. Is it something that's sustainable? Is it something that um, folks are going to, you know, if, if choice suddenly opens up, it might be something that people hold on to for the first few years, but then at, probably within five years, folks would be taking advantage of the choice opportunities that are in the larger school districts or closer to their home or their work or whatever. Um, that's just my... Well, I'm, I, I kind of like where you're headed with this, but I need to think about it some more and, and get some more information from you about it. Uh, I, I have a number of comments. <laughs> Sorry. That's good. Uh, I think what you're talking about is similar, not exactly, to the questions that were asked by the Windsor district mm -hmm. that they just went through, and they were pretty much given an unequivocal no that it could not work that way. Yours is slightly different. Uh, yeah, because they were trying to merge choice districts and keep three districts as choice and one district operating at Windsor High School. But so their, it's different. their thing was it depended on which town you lived in. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, and my other comment is, how does this increase opportunity for our students? And that goes just to what you said. I don't think it does. I, it does increase opportunity very simply because now instead of a child from Dover or Wardsboro having a choice of all the public schools and all the private schools, they also have the Marlboro School. They've they had that now. Have How have many kids from Dover come over but here But Marlboro kids now have the ability to choose mm -hmm. to choose choice somewhere else instead of just staying in Marlboro. So it doesn't do it for everybody, but it, in, it increases the choice for Marlboro. Increases opportunity for Marlboro students, which would be this new, remember, I'm not thinking of this as a Dover right. or a Wardsboro. I'm thinking of this as this bigger entity, this bigger community, and it yeah, increases opportunities for a portion of that community. The only reason I wanted to bring this up one more time was because then we can focus on it. If, if we say no, we're not going to go there, then we just focus on the, the, the pre-K through six and well, then I we're really, done. I really, really appreciate your sensitivity to our predicament. You've been exceptionally <laughs> <laughs> sensitive to it. Um, and it is, it's a really real thing. I mean, it's a huge, it's a huge deal for Marlboro. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we are here, and we want to be here, and we want to explore this avenue for our kids. So I think we're okay. Mm -hmm. I just had one, <laughs> one more that I didn't get out the first time around was we have to clear this hurdle, and I really think oh, yeah. we have to clear this hurdle tonight. Well, that's why I brought it up. So, but what you brought up doesn't allow us to clear the hurdle well, because it allows us to extend it even farther. Okay. And I'm not saying it's wrong. But if that's the direction we want to go down, then we're going to have to push our timeline back. Um, versus if we decide tonight, yeah, we'll do a K through eight district or we'll do a K through six district, then we can move forward in one direction. What you're proposing keeps it blurred for well, at least another two It still fits weeks. in our timeline, though. 
that we present? I don't think so because it colors everything else that we do. <clears throat> okay. uh, I don't know who's first, so we'll give it to Laura. Well, I was going to say what I'm hearing Marlboro say, but Dan had his hand up. Let me say it anyway. I think, I'm hearing Marlboro, <laughs> I think I'm hearing Marlboro say, proceed K6. That's, I would that's, agree with that. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you guys have other options you're yeah. looking at anyway. Yeah. Right? So we don't need to give them all their options. Mm -hmm. I'm good with that. So those are the thoughts from the committee. Um, I just need, yeah. last time, oh, well, it's, yeah, two, it's two to three anyway. <laughs> two to one anyway. <laughs> Unless I give you the equalizer. <laughs> equalizer. Mm -hmm. um, Jamaica and Vernon, so there was, um, John had sent an email out just saying, hey, it's really easy while I'm on these websites to pull information. Pull Vernon and Jamaica now instead of maybe pulling it down the road if you have questions. So I, I had sent that out to people, and, and I got a, an overwhelming majority of those that actually responded to say yes, which was more than uh, five or more than six members. Or six members, so it was a majority of the committee. So if I can just have a, a motion that to instruct John when he's pulling any data. Can I have a question yeah. first. Does anybody know what happened to the to Jamaica vote? Was it yesterday? Or it's tonight. It's no, it's today. It's, the it's eighth. tonight. That's tonight. It's, it's tonight. tonight. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because that is it we eighth? should know. Yeah, second. So okay. yeah. that's where. It's wow. at. Willie Laura, get on mine. What's that? <laughs> Willie of County. Yeah, oh, Sorry, you, right. right. you can still go in. Okay. okay. <laughs> if they're not available, then they're not available. So Jamaican and Vernon information included in work. Yeah. So can I just get a motion that we include, um, we instruct John that when he's gathering data to include Jamaica sure. and, and Vernon. So you, you'll make that and raise second. second it. Sure. Are you getting, am I going too quick? Are you okay? Are you keeping up with the motions? It's it amazing. He would I don't know. We'll say. <laughs> okay. So we have a motion and a second to instruct John to include those two towns. Is there any discussion? What? Yes. When do we expect someone from Jamaica to attend? Well, I think. <laughs> yeah, I was to give you the tonight, obviously. Yeah. Um, I think after point, tonight. Oh, okay. and, and I am informed. The, the person I was told was her contact has been getting our documents, our paperwork. Okay. It's that parent thing. Uh, no, you're the parent. There's. A person or something, I think, is the Carol email. Person, yeah. Yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So, continuing to work on our question. So, I think we so, answered. Just a clarification. So, yeah. if the Jamaica vote, I don't know whether it fails or passes, I don't know how it was worded, but mm. if they're not let out of the union, I won't include them. Well, yeah, the vote does not let them out of the union. We're not going to know that for another. No, but. But it could it could automatically say if the vote is to, to so stay with Leland Gray, right? Right. 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 then we don't then need I to include right. that. Okay. Right. Is it, and everybody's good with that, right? Yeah. There's no reason to at that point. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So continue work on co our questions, and I think we've killed question number one. I need to go back to that just a minute. I'm I'm yeah. a little unclear of what what we're saying here. If we're if as a group we've decided K through six. What's happening to the Marlboro seventh and eighth grade? Is that are we assuming that it's gone? Well, the way I visualize it is, we are going to be presenting to the Marlboro voters two separate options. This is just the way I visualize it. But there is a committee working on the alternative structures, and they will have the choice to say we choose to merge our K through six and become a K through six and have choice for seven eight, or we choose to follow the alternative structures path, path and not be part of this uh, merged district, it gives them two clear choices. It doesn't seem to me productive to, to continue right. discussion okay. within this group uh, about the, the seven I just eight. needed clarification. Does that, does that make sense? Well, I guess I just need clarification. So I was under the assumption that the alternative structure was if this committee does not like this is the first question that's asked, and if it this gets turned down at Marlboro Town Meeting, and this doesn't go forward, then we submit the alternative structure model. That's because more likely what will happen. So that's what, that was my understanding of how the state says we need to go about this. You we can't we'll, we'll all be in that two, right. Right. You will use we that. can't present two two right. questions right. at okay. our time. You you will yeah. use you will use the decision from the voters right. Right. at your meeting as, to, as part of your work on your alternative structure. But if with you folks being advisory with Dover, if that's how we decide to do it, and Dover and Wardsboro would have to be necessary, and mm -hmm. if if we agreed and you guys didn't, we would move on. They if you guys agreed, right. all of us would move right. on. And, and I, I think the, the net effect is the same, whether the vote is the same day or not, because 
we still wouldn't have heard back from the Board of Ed on the alternative structures uh, until the later well, date. I, anyway, I don't think so. they would even entertain it yeah. until, right. you, until, until, you we, got, until we went through with this. Vote on we this finished one, yeah, so. this process. Yeah. And, and this John process Chase has said no if we're wrong. Are you, you no, no, that's, uh, that's yeah. good. Yeah, okay, that's all okay so yeah. I think then, Randy, we are a pre K through 6 study. We have to vote on that? And I don't think we have to vote on it. I think by unanimous consent, we're pretty well there. Okay. We beat that one up. Mm -hmm. um, and John, I'm going to let you take it over from here because this is a lot of the information you need. Sure. So I started, I put together some data. It's on a two sheet handout like this. So do you have one? There's two on I the do. chair next to you. Okay. So at the top, I summarized what, what I believe to be the key, um, key factors to look at the average daily membership, K6. And then the second line, it's either K6 or K8 per pupil spending. I really couldn't sort out uh, Marlboro spending by, by K6. So, it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's a rough, it's a proxy for, uh, for the K6. The free and reduced hot lunch percentages, uh, and these are last year's. I don't have this year's yet. The, and then when you put secondary and um, Elementary together, the number of equalized pupils, and that's mm. that's the number that puts your that with your total spending, your equalized. I mean, your uh, ed fund spending gives you your per pupil cost. For my money, it's the per pupil cost, equalized per pupil spending, that's uh, a really important number because that's the exact number that determines your tax rates. Mm -hmm. So that always, it, for me, is a the best proxy for comparison of finances across across districts. So then for each town I have um, four years of the numbers I have so far. So you can just take a look at, at those as well. Uh, tuition, oh I forgot, the tuition, I just documented how you determine tuition. So if it's a public school it's controlled by agency of education rules. If it's a uh, if it's not a public school, then you've got three towns. Dover does it a little bit differently than Marlboro and Wardsboro. Um, I believe it was Wardsboro that used to use the, the Leland and Gray average and switched, or it yeah, must have been Wardsboro. So they do up to the Vermont state average. And then it's just a whole bunch of numbers, so. Uh, John, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, actually, one that my first comment is an edit on uh, page two, Marlboro's uh, teacher to administrator ratio. Uh, I suspect that third figure should be 9.1, not 91. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of administrators here. Um, he yeah, trying to show how we could save money. Yeah, save money. Yeah. Right. Um, but I was wondering. Um, Thanks. Uh, the pre-CLA, uh, does anybody from Dover or Wardsboro know what your CLA is, I happen to know Marlboro is essentially always 100%. So yeah, we've been running really close, 1.0. Well, we've been as high as 1.10 and as low as like 9, 9, 9, 8. But it's pretty, our listers spend a lot of time. So these tax rates are probably very close to the effective tax rate then. In the last few years, yeah, yeah. for Dover. Mm. 1.01, 1. 1. 1, right? Or I think it's 1.01. I almost 1. thought we were 1. 1. 1. 2 at one point. Yeah. Long time ago. Well, yeah. It usually changes each year. Yeah, it does. And wow. the thing to remember about <laughs> yeah. CLA is that um, in a unified district, there'll be one t uh, homestead tax rate, and then the CLA is applied town by well, town. Well, Laura, Laura actually had something on a website. Um, there is a study group that's looking into regionalizing CLAs oh. Oh, because of this law. And you want, why don't you take a couple minutes, Lauren, and just let people know? <laughs> sure. Do you not? I mean, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm putting you on the spot. Nope. I'm sorry. It came. Nope. Thank you. I'm just shuffling through my head. It also came out as a email blast from um, the BSBA, yeah. and actually, the BSBA's email blast was better than mine. Uh, but the this there's a study committee, and there was legislation passed last year. To look at what would happen with um, if you if you had a merged CLA with these districts going with the Act 46, so when you merge these things, you merge the CLA. 
So there's a lot of modeling going on. I had, I had an invitation to come if I had anything to say um, as a legislator. There's a public hearing, which means anybody can come, really, if they have something to say. Um, I'll have to find an email, the date and time. It's in September. I almost want to think it's like... The end of September 28th. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and the hearing's in Montpelier. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, being administered by the Department of Taxes. What else? Okay. Yes. Good. That's it. I'll find it. But it's who, something who people want to just... Who do I send stuff to? Do I send it to you? Yeah, and then I'll put it, I'll attach it with the minutes and, and get it out to everybody. Jamaica votes next week. Oh, next week. Yeah, okay. the 13th. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead, John. I'm sorry we interrupted you. No, that was, I mean, it was It was mostly so just to get these numbers of what your other front meeting, too. There you go. We won't charge you that. <laughs> so any other questions on the, on the pay, uh, that sheets that were, were um, that John presented to us? And I can give you side-by-side -side town histories over time as well, if you'd like. It's just a matter of, you know, how much do you really want to look at? Well, maybe, uh, maybe you can answer this. Uh, the Dover, I see Dover pays the tuition up to Burr and Burton tuition rate, yet your first pupil spending goes down to 15-1 from the K through 6. Um, and you have 85 students. How many actually take advantage of that, or, or what's the where do most of the students go? I, I think K this year, in, in seven through twelve, most of our, and I think they got asked at the last meeting, but most of them are going to private independent schools now, Burr Burton and others. I well, think we're kind of split between Brattleboro and Burr and Burr and Burr. Yeah. So what's the cost of Brattleboro? Um, Brattleboro is actually one of the, our cheaper public high schools. Okay. Um, that would answer the question. I, we can actually have those numbers. We pay whatever, you know, the statewide, yeah. the, the, the teacher, or whatever the school bills us on the public high schools. Right. And I, we can get those numbers. I think I actually have I don't think that. Brattleboro's one of the cheaper. Brattleboro's one of the more expensive Yeah, ones. it's pretty high. It's 16 or 17. Something. Yeah, Yeah, Leland Degree is like 14. Twin Valley is like 14 uh, or 14. Are you sure? Brattleboro, yeah. I thought, was... No, Brad was high. It's invalid. Average at the fourteen five. So if you have eighty five students yeah. at one point three one four, it's fifteen four right, per yeah. student. Yeah, Brad was high. So, so let me let me back off on that, on that a little bit. So you comparing the the fourth line, third line down K six spending per enrolled to the resident. Well, that's to, that's just total money spent. Right. Whereas down right. at the bottom, when you're looking right. at Ed Fund briefly, right. that's that's just the education fund money. So. Right. You really can't. Those are apples and oranges kind of comparison. I'm just looking, I'm looking at a per pupil expense. Well, remember too, the per pupils aren't real pupils. Okay. They're, they're yeah, that. The they're that. They're that weighted average daily membership number, which right. comes out with a point something. You, right. You know, so yeah. you can see when you have like you know again where I joked about. You know, if well, you only have half a student. So go ahead and ask your question again. Well, I guess if, if 85 students are, are in, in Dover and 70 12. Their average is 15.4 that they're paying per pupil. That is the total number they're enrolled. It says resident enrollment. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. your per pupil is higher at K through six, but then it goes down as what's what it's all students that which is term, you said determines the tax rate 15.1. I'm being amazed that that number goes down to that number. Mm -hmm. If the tuition mm -hmm. is 15.4. Yeah. Again, it's not comparing the same things though. No, I understand. Okay. That. The, the other mm -hmm. problem with the, the per pupil spending is, is and everybody will argue with me, but I've been doing it for a lot mm -hmm. of years, is it, it's not as simple as numbers that the state would like you to believe because there's a lot of things that weigh into it. Dover happens to have a lot of income in, be, because of tuition. We have a lot of income because of solar. We have income because we have a reserve fund we use to, mm -hmm. to level, level the tax rate out. So it's not always a, right, a, right. a true number because all that comes off before they figure out your per pupil spending. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, before I forget though, um, I know we've had material like on this this stuff um, at the last meeting and other meetings. So I think we would want to make sure that we get that to Anita because she's going to have all of the materials that we've been considering. This is the average 14. Everything. Yeah. Somehow be yes. incorporated. Yeah. I can email you everything you sent out. 
it's an issue. Well, except well, and it would also be a good resource for us, right? So if we're in the meeting, we can go back and look yeah. at. Oh, well, so that. those things are on the, the attachment that um, she sent out with her, still with the minutes, because I, I'm pretty sure Matt showed the difference. Yes. Yeah. So we'll we'll get those numbers though. Yeah. Okay. But, but remember, what's your what's Dover's Dover's school that gets considered the local? High school, that be Twin Valley? No, yeah. most of them go to Brownsboro. So you right pay, now. you'd pay the full tuition if they go to Brown. If they go to a public high school, we have to pay whatever the tuition is. Mm -hmm. If Burlington was $2 million a student and they chose to go to Burlington, <laughs> we would have to pay that. That's right. state law. So the, the law states that you will pay the statewide average, you'll pay the tuition of any public school, high school, okay. and you will pay the statewide average unless an other sum is voted on by the electorate. Right. And it, each ten at the annual meeting. Which is what Ward Road, Moore Road looks like they've done. No, they, they haven't. They're paying the statewide average. Dover votes an, an additional oh, sum of money. Okay. So right now, um, Randy, correct me, that Wardsboro used to vote the Leland and Gray, because what we found is in the past, the statewide average is usually lower than any of the, the local high schools. Right. Um, because right. remember, it's the whole state. And you're getting that whole big, you know, cost savings and supposedly from the big schools. <laughs> so and this this past year, the state average was fourteen thousand two ninety seven, right. and the Burn Burton rate was fifteen nine five zero. Do you have Brattleboro there too? I don't have Brattleboro. Right. Okay. So I know Brattleboro. I know Twin Valley used to be higher because one of the arguments they used in Dover was um, <laughs> that if they went to Twin Valley, it'd be more than Burn Burn. But I know that Twin Valley has a special deal with us that if we send so many students there, we can get a reduced rate. So they're all in that ball. Yeah, actually, Twin Valley just dropped it across the board to 14.5 four, four, five five. this year. Yeah. So they're actually, so. you know, $1,500 cheaper. And, and I think Brattleboro is, is not that high. I think Brattleboro was lower because they can't include their bond payment to us. Because if they include bond payment, then they lose some, some funding. All right, thank you. I would like to make a suggestion, John. If we're going to uh, disseminate this uh, as, as good public information, I think we should just... No, I, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting any of the numbers are wrong. No, just, no. I would just I suggest that John uh, ch just change the wordage here so that Marlboro and Wardsboro pay up to the state average uh, or the tuition at any public high school. That would okay. correctly state the that situation. Would be that was what the first sentence was supposed to do. Right. right. Can, yeah. That's that's but I right. Can state it again. That's right. Because right. Warsboro pays for for Leland and Gray, or any state, any high, right. state high school. Yeah. Anyway, that would okay. you know then that we wouldn't have people asking these questions uh, if they were looking at this document. So are we are we good now with the second one, the per pupil stuff and the, the, the numbers? Thanks for pointing out. This is really uh, informative. I, I get lost when I start looking at this stuff, <laughs> and I think most people who don't spend time on school boards too. And I, I think what we really, as we move forward in this, what we really want to distill out is what would a merge district cost the taxpayers in individual towns? Because ultimately it becomes a pocketbook issue at that point. And I agree with you, Rich, and we've had this discussion many times. The whole per pupil average thing is, a, in my mind, has always been a bit of a red herring anyway. Because it doesn't really get to what the cost of each individual, individual district is. So. I, I don't know what we do with that. Well, what I can throw out is, and Laura um, had a little bit of an issue with it, but our oh. previous business manager, and I think you were there for that <laughs> one, and I think, <laughs> Dan, you may have been there. Well, Who's no that one has great? the windows down. Oh, that feels good. I'll mm -hmm. sacrifice if I, if I do. That's fine. <laughs> um, so anyways, one of the things we, what, what the previous business manager did was, instead of, because we can't go into specifics, because we don't know what a new district would spend because they, they would have to make up their budget. You know, we, we've kind of discussed that trans there may be some cost savings. There's cost savings in, um, just bear with us, Lord. Um, there's cost savings in, in um, you know, there's, there's less audits. There may be some combined purchasing. So what he did was he just took our budgets as they were. He withdrew, remember that we all lose our phantom pupils and we all lose um, there's two things you lose, the phantom pupils and small schools grant. the small school grant. He removed those from the calculations. He added the eight cent savings and just showed what a projected rate would be. 
Oh yeah, I've seen that. Right. Yeah. So I mean, and that's kind of because without having an actual budget, how do you know? Wasn't there a chart that also showed if you didn't merge, right. what your projected and that's in the that's in this study here. Yeah, that was actually that to me was more effective than what we're looking at here. Okay, but and I agree with Laura one hundred percent that it's not accurate because unfortunately, you know, you don't know what this. Well, I don't know what the price of milk is going to be next week either. Well, but that's my mind. Line. Faith. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, I don't know what the price of oil is going to be next Nobody year. If I did and I could predict it, I wouldn't be here. I'd be, in the, wouldn't be, I'd be in the Bahamas with my harem. So anyways, do we have that? Do you have that? Did you get that? Did you get that? Yeah. <laughs> so so it's, it's, we'll try to get that, but it, I think I don't have the chart with me. What about John and, and your track record, or what are you seeing for other emerging districts? Is anybody coming up with any speculative figures that are? The only thing I've seen is people going back and saying, what if this year you were unified? What would it look like? Okay. Well, I can do that. And would you then take the yeah, three well, town budgets and yeah, divvy them up? And then if there are any obvious savings, you could subtract those. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there'd be a lot, either right way. Mm -hmm. So, Randy, we'll try to get that. That's a good thing. Can, yeah, I think that chart will be uh, good. But uh, again, remember, you got to take it with a grain of salt because it, it's. Yeah. All right. We'll go to you after, Dwight. Uh, a couple things. I'm, I'm wary of putting together any kind of spreadsheet or budget or even plan budget or anything like that because once it's out in the public, people will look at it and take it at face value. So I think it's yeah. something you really have to be concerned about. Now this, this is, let me just comment though. So this has already been out in the public. So that's been out. But if we were right. to prepare something, or even based on last year's budget, or because we don't know what, just like you said, we don't know what's going to look like. The other question, the comment I would have is maybe for Anita. What's our response to someone who says to us, "Are we going to save any money by doing this?" We, I think we need a unified response of what that is, and it's just say, "I don't know," or we won't know what happens. That may not be good enough. Um, you know, is there is there a response to that question? Because that probably would come up right away. Yeah, and, and remember, the big purpose of this whole thing is not about saving money. I know, but that's a question. It's, right. Hang on a second, because I think I said more, and then I'll get to you. So, thanks for teeing that up, Wayne. Um, so, <laughs> good. Good. Um, I will tell you, I think a lot of people have been pushing. There, there is a contingency of folks that have been pushing on this for a long time hoping that there would be savings by seeing some consolidation. It is my very strong belief that consolidation will not save money in and of itself because of the construct of the education finance mechanism we have right now, okay? Which really wants, we've equalized all the money coming in and it really, education policy really tries to equalize things coming out. And so by consolidating, what you do is potentially free up resources to add more opportunity. And that, that, with Act 46, when you look at these disparate districts, right, you've got some that have, that are offering this and some that are barely struggling, hanging on. You know, if you, <laughs> you, to bring these guys up so that you're treating everybody equally, it could even cost more. So, I mean, I don't think you can say definitively. I think we can make it so. But I don't, the, the perp, I would not, I personally, I, I don't expect tremendous savings. But there may so, be the opportunity, for, there may be yeah. more opportunity. I think that's, that's, I think, I think that's a good answer. You know, it's yeah. deflect to say there's more resources and also say there's opportunity for savings. And that's the answer, I think. And, but whether or not this group agrees to that answer, or if that's something a PR person would say that we need to answer. Answer that question. It is a question that we'll get asked. Oh, it is a question. It's a real question. Okay, yeah. I'm going to go to her and then you read I have a question for John as a member of the public. In your experience in schools that have already merged, districts that have already merged, has there been any post voting polling that indicated what criteria people voted on? Like, did anybody go after a town meeting and say, why did you vote yes and why did you vote no, and to try to determine what were the factors that made them vote yes or no? Was it the budgets? Was it better opportunities? Was it that they thought the other school was cuter than theirs? Like, what? Did, has there ever been any polling, post-merger polling? I, I, I can answer that, too. I mean, there is. Yeah. And we've, we've had stuff sent to us, and I can find that. Because 
there was some that were turned down and why people turned it down and what, when some were approved and why people thought it was a good benefit. So instead of trying to get that now, let's right. bring that to the next meeting. So, And then that can help us mm -hmm. frame some of our questions and discussion too. Right, because then it also frames the kind of information that you make available if you know the basis on which people are likely to vote. If it's numbers, then by all means, let's write a lot of numbers. But if it's if it's other factors, then you, what are those? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just a question. Um, Randy, sir. Uh, Dwight actually brings up a good point about how we respond when people talk to us, and I've been thinking about it. To me, the, the, the first response for me that I think of when I see this is this process allows us to control our own destiny as towns and as a school district versus taking a chance on the state controlling our destiny mm -hmm. and do we really want that? Mm -hmm. And we all, I certainly know in Dover, my guess is in the other two towns, nobody really likes anybody from Montpelier coming down and telling us what to do. And even though they told us what to do in this process, this is a better chance of controlling our destiny than the alternative at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, Laura? I have one more. Yeah. So just, I, I think actually a great opportunity for maybe maintaining an FAQ mm -hmm. on our mm -hmm. website. Right, right, right. So when yeah. we when we decide on an answer to a question, mm -hmm. you know, we keep that list. You know, That's like the parking lot we have. Yes, but we keep that like publicly, like, right. oh, here's what we're saying right. about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah that's a good idea. Here's, here's why this is good for, this could be good for the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And your questions? Yeah. If they've been asked, we'll have the responses right, right there, so you don't need right. to contact the person. Yeah, so you shouldn't need to have to answer them on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to skip Great. over what will the report need to contain, what articles will need to be presented, because I think that's a, a pretty big question. But I'm going to just skip to phantom student enrollment. So could I, um, it's, can I just put one thing about the articles, though? We're going to go back to that, so you'll have a chance. Perfect, thank you. So phantom student enrollment for each district. Um, John's going to get us those numbers. Yeah. It's just hard data. Choice history tuition amount and how arrived. I think we've discussed that. Is everybody comfortable with that and knows how that happens? People wanted some more data on right. the amounts, so I'll get that. Right, so we'll get all the, the school amounts and stuff. Transportation, um, I think we discussed a little bit, but Dover owns two buses. We do some of our own transportation. We do some with West River through Wyndham Central, and we do some with the mover. Yeah. This could be a huge cost issue. Yeah, when we start talking about elementary school choice, mm -hmm. yeah, policy. You know? So just like that in the back right. of your mind. It's and again, it's something that we can, we'll have to address, but not decide. That will be up to a new board. Correct. But those questions are going to come up. Mm -hmm. Marlboro, I know, owns a couple buses, does some routes. They also partake in the mover, mm -hmm. and I don't anything else. No, we don't use any other services mm -hmm. other than the mover. I just have it from the principals. Right. Mm -hmm. And then Wardsboro. No, West River. Buses. Right. You guys, West River, West River through Wyndham Central. Yep. Um, IB program, you know, we've, we kind of discussed that. I just had that in there because a couple people still don't know what it means and I still can't pronounce it. So. <laughs> Back on Yeah, I know. I just, that's why I say IB. Is there any, are we pretty much, if anybody wants more information on that, we can actually get you a packet that had been put together when we presented it to the town. I'd, I'd like to know what it is since I wasn't at that last meeting. Okay. okay. So why don't we make sure we get a packet together that we can send out. I think I still have that one that we did when we did town meeting, but if not, I'm sure between Laura and I. If we're going to do that, shouldn't we also do that for the programs at the other two schools? Uh, if, they, if, if there's any questions about I would, it. I would want a little more detail on that. If we're going to go to that extent for one, it's creating more work, I don't understand. But, um, you know, because I think we all need to be able to talk intelligently as we get closer to a town meeting, meeting vote about the other schools. Okay, so, well, that's, John will do that. He'll, he'll gather that up for the next meeting. Is everybody okay with that? Overall budgeting and when do we when do the new board members get elected? I still saw that it's at the time you time vote. Of, yeah, time you vote. So what's going to happen is if when we present articles to be presented to the voters, you also vote on you. you people will go and get petitions and and run for um, for the new board at that time. Really? Yeah. And assets and debts mm -hmm. of each each school. And John is still. Oh, sorry. 
Hang on, let me finish this sentence. I'll well, get back to you. Well, this was about the one before. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Uh, we spent a lot of time at our, our town meetings talking about whether our board members should get $100 or $200 or $300. Does that fall into the jurisdiction of this group? No. Can we get $2,500? <laughs> Assets and debts of each school. You could, you should. It'll increase our student population. <laughs> um, but you won't be able to go to the Marlboro program. Assets and debts of each school. John's still going to work on that. He still needs some financial help. So that's going to come at the next meeting. So that brings us right back to what will the report need to contain and what articles will need to be presented, which I think is kind of together. We're going to get to you right after this. Okay, yeah. I got you down at 8.15. Or, I'm sorry, at 8, um, you're at 8.30. 8.15. So what, what will the report need to contain and what articles will need to be presented? So there's been a bunch of samples that we've handed out, and I'm hoping that people have had a chance to review them. Mike, you had a comment you want to make before we move on? Or? Are rejected articles included in those? We have. I did send some rejected out. Did? I did. I think there was one. Was it? The minority was, was it the Franklin? No. no, there was there ones that have actually been submitted and turned down by the BOE. Oh no, yeah. well, I thought it was one that was voted down by the voters. But what's my guess? Oh, no, I'm asking about the Board of Education, about the right. state. Okay, are there articles that have been rejected. That we are working on that. That was something John was going to check in because um, um, the superintendent mentioned that earlier. Excellent. Articles so. What were, Did I send around the, the cliff notes to you? The article, like it was a cliff notes of, of articles of the so, recent side by side. I did. I meant to. It was the opportunities right. cliff notes. The okay, so no, yes. this is the article, so I'll send that around right away. The different articles. By AOE, AOE, articles that have been rejected by AOE. B -O -E. article. BOE, I'm sorry. BOE and articles that have been, well, some have been rejected by the agency before they even went to the board, too. Oh, that's so what my yeah. we want Probably AOE no. and BOE if the Board of Ed rejected mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. I don't think they've, anything has gone to them yet that they've rejected, has it? I have no idea. I, I actually, yeah, we'll know. find that out. Articles that have been um, voted down. And then what were you going to do? You were going to do cliff notes of articles? That just were... the side by side. I just did a cliff note. Side. Somebody asked um, on the other committee if I could do that so they'd have to read all the articles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, ma'am. Well, I, I'm just a comment about the three that you sent out that, that I took a look at. And I thought the first one was just bu bureaucratic gobbledygook. It didn't say <laughs> anything. <laughs> the last one was pretty good. It really. Do you remember which one that one was? That was the Franklin County one, I think. Okay. And I was appalled at the first one. Which one was that? Uh, Chittenden. The first one. The model. <laughs> it, did, it really didn't say anything. Either. And all the articles are easily accessible on the state website. Oh, they're all right there. And, and the, the ones that have passed. The other one, I'll get to you one second. The other one that went around was the red, the, yes. the uh, mm -hmm. Leland and right. Gray red one that, right. that was we yeah. used as samples too. And that's a very, and then we also sent out the Wyndham Southwest, which is the Wilmington one. Yes. Question for John again. Why is this not a template where you just fill in the blanks and it either works or doesn't? Why isn't the state providing all of these types of committees like this statewide a template and saying, tweak these to the, to write your name in in the right place and send it back to us. They, they got one. Well, they they don't have a template for the report well, you know and the articles is. because um, people in Vermont like to do things their own special way. And Reinvent the wheel. You know, that's right. But they do have a, uh, and I think that's just within the last year and a half, a, um, uh, sort of a, a list of what you have, the questions you have to answer. And it's really ex extracting things from the report and articles to put into a, a template. So you need to submit both things. There, there's a worksheet that they, they sent out, which is kind of a template. Kind of a template. Mm -hmm. And we've all been given that, and that was actually sent out. That will be something you'll get when we send you the emails of the, of Got it. the agendas and 
that some people got, some people didn't, and she took a shot at me on that. So next meeting, we got to move forward on that. So it's 8.15, so we're back on track. Unless anybody has anything else. No? Everybody good? Okay, how to proceed towards putting together something to be voted on. So one of the things is Dan had asked if he could have a few minutes um, about leadership council. So if you've been reading some of those um, proposals, there's, th there's things about not only the board and the governance, but leadership council. So we'll turn it over to Dan. Um, so I'm going to hand these around, um, but uh, I, I want to stress that this is just a way to get the conversation going about A, board makeup of the new board, and B, the leadership councils and what roles they play. Um, so, uh, so actually I would, if everybody, when you get this, would you look down to the next to the last paragraph? That's the one, uh, and these are just suggestions. I looked at uh, Wyndham Southeast, and I looked at... Um, the uh, Reedsboro, Stanford, uh, Halifax articles, um, and uh, so it's. So, and I thought it's going to be easier for us to come up with uh, a, for a discussion if we have something on the table in front of us. So, my suggestion is a new board. At least we start with looking at the new board, made up very much the same way this committee is, uh, three four three, um, and that those be elected from the residents of the town that they represent by the people in that town, not by the uh, pop population of the entire district. That's my suggestion. Uh, up for grabs, we, but at some point we need to go to John and say this is how we want to do this. Um, uh, and then uh, last paragraph, you can see uh, do we now want to build in something about future uh, numbers of residents within these three towns. If one of so, them starts to blossom, let me let me answer that. Um, so board makeup is the, the the legislature has already it, it has to be made up of not of student population, right? But, yes, by population in the community and right. and it has to be proportional. And okay. it's, just, it's right. just like with the Leland and Gray board, as population changes through census, then the membership changes. So basically, that's done for us through legis through the legislature. We would also, so the original number, you know, that we want on the board, that is something we'd write in the articles, mm -hmm. and that's a good starting point, you know, and um, it would be based on the the population. So those numbers are, are equivalent. Okay. Great. That was the yeah. one thing that got turned down at the red one because the red was looking at some type of representation mm -hmm. that didn't equal one person equal one vote. And so it got sent back to them to redo. And I don't know who was, I know Laura may have been there, um, but we actually at Wyndham Central had a vote um, on a way to, to make a representation that would allow those schools to maintain the representation on Wyndham Central, but still um, meet the requirements of the law and fill in for that, that new red. So some of that's just mm -hmm. already taken care of for us. And there, the leadership council though is something that is more is is more available to us um, to to change. Except for you can do at large representatives. So that's something we will have Dan look in or John look into for us. Okay, that sounds good. Um, I want to make sure that at least my suggestion is that the um, that the board members are not from at large, but from right. the towns that they. Uh, Three, four, three, and from the residents of that town, and voted for by the residents of that okay. town. Uh, I don't know whether Act Forty Six specifies that, uh, but uh, but I think that's that's what I would like to suggest anyway. Up, up for discussion, and then the leadership councils um, is is basically the format or is a format in Wyndham Southeast. They have them. Each town has one. It's the uh, liaison, perhaps you might say. Um, if there are if there are things which need to be negotiated or uh, either way communication either way between the new district and the people within the town, um, again, uh, I'm just throwing this out as a way to keep to get our discussion going. So that we, uh, uh, I think, listening to people earlier, um, you know, the the principals were all pretty clear about this that that they like the individuality of the schools, and I think that the leadership councils. Uh, are being used to to a certain extent to provide exactly that in the articles that I've looked at. So, anyway, 
I just throw this out here as a way to get started because sooner or later we got to take that list of questions or the template or whatever you want to call it and start putting answers to it. Any questions for Dan? Thank you, Dan, for that presentation. I just had a question, maybe not for Dan, but as far as the board makeup, the, so the board makeup is is pretty much set for us what the percentage of each member will be on, on the board. The, there's a couple of ways that people can do it, but typically it's by it's just proportionate by population of the towns. Okay. Is the number you can vary though. Right, right. Okay. So are certain articles or certain things that, that the board can vote on can the committee determine how that vote takes place, whether it be, you know, a simple majority or a two thirds majority or can each different item in the article or the <coughs> town govern that as I mean the state govern that as well. That that's a lot been of, different. A lot yeah. of articles about school closing. Are, are designed by study committees mm -hmm. and they vary so they, they set a different way for how you go about closing a school. Right, Some right. say a unanimous vote of the board mm -hmm. or majority a no, or majority, majority, majority or super unanimous. majority or a uh, vote by the board and the town has to also vote. So, okay. so, that's so we do have some leeway in how different how items to propose that. Okay. And there's, I've seen mm -hmm. in some other ones there's some things that are left um, that there, there requires more than a simple majority. It requires like two thirds, two -thirds or, on, or the town. But vote. not lots not of everything. There's just like some specific things. Right. There's four or five things that I mean, most of them revolve around closing schools or or um, construction or purchasing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of property or new schools. But okay. we'll definitely we'll, we'll come back to that. Yeah. Okay. So the only question I think is that. I have a question. Yeah. And if, then Randy. If all the district schools and districts merge, then when town meeting day happens for each town, that would still be separate meetings, but then there would be one school meeting for all. If, if every town meetings meeting. would be separate, then there'd be one school meeting. One school meeting. Because where we have two meetings? We don't have one. We have one the night before, a well, couple days before, the and then. Yeah, so, there won't be there won't be a meeting in Wardsboro to discuss school issues. Right. Got There'll it. be an election in Wardsboro to approve a budget. But it won't just be in Wardsboro. There will be an election in the district, probably either one location or multiple locations, and you will vote. You know, for the members, right. and you will vote on a budget and any other thing that may be brought up for Australian ballot. They're usually, Leland and Gray would be a good example if they have an annual meeting where they explain things sometime before the budget and then so the then budget's voted. So then that information voted. gets fed to our budgets that we vote on at our town meeting. So we no longer have the right as an individual town to unvote something. Not on, not on the school side. Got it. Right. Because it's not the town of Wards for a school, it's this. Right, event. so how do you explain that in all these paperwork that people have mm -hmm. to vote on? Doesn't that it, have it's, to be explained? It, there's, there would be a booklet that goes out, just like there's a town report. It would be the the Wyndham Central Elementary School year annual report. There'll be a budget in there. There'll be the articles right, that you're going to vote on. Right, but my question to you is, don't people know that? need to know that before they vote this coming March? Oh. That would be part of the FAQs, I think, that we were talking about <laughs> before, like one of the questions right. that we answer. Yeah, that would have to be. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm saying, no. doesn't it need no. to be in the document that you're submitting Yes. Well, no, because the council mm -hmm. has to approve this merger. Yeah, right. So there would be, this year, there here. would be a single per town school right. budget. Mm -hmm. well, right, for but in order to get people year. to vote, don't they need to know what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, there would have to be some language in the article that would say, in the future, well, residents of the three towns will vote on a combined budget on this date. to be determined, or it could be on the 15th of January. And, and they'll get a separate report. Yeah, correct. Yeah, you would have to have language in, for in there. For board members. Yeah. All right, yeah. got it. Let me go to Randy and then back to you. Yeah, uh, back to the leadership councils. Are there any merged districts that are that have actually created leadership councils to this point? I, I don't know the answer to that. I think, you know, it, it, it's an interesting idea. <clears throat> to me, it raises a few questions. One of which is, does it muddle the chain of command for the school administration and for the voter? Because okay, I have a as an administrator. I want to put new soccer goals on the school soccer field. Do I go to the leadership council to get them to advocate for me? Or do I just go to my district school board to advocate myself for it? 
I don't think there's any right or wrong answer. I'm just you know throwing that question out. That's just one thought that comes yeah. to mind. But I, if, if there's examples out there, I'd be curious to see if if they're working, how they're working, how they were established. There, there are, and there's just there's what they they, they can do and they can't mm -hmm. do, and how they're appointed, and how they're made up. So we'll get that. I have seen stuff where it says you know they, they can make recommendations or give input on curricula. So they're kind of paper um, tigers. Yeah, if you look at the Brattleboro proposal, there's leadership councils in there, and Daniel, because you probably read it more recently, it talks about the appointments and what they what mm -hmm. they actually can do. It's not like wide open. Yeah, broad. No, I wouldn't think they would. So they're appointed in Brattleboro in that particular district. Some are appointed, some, some are elected, are some are. I mean, there's all different ways of doing it. I think. In one of them, I saw the principal appoints one, the the um, there's one the principal acts as one, and there's some people that are voted on, and then there's a representative from the board is on that council also, a representative from the bigger board, you know, is, yeah. is part of the council. So there are some examples if you look in in the different. So it's like an advisory committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they really chose the word. It really depends on on how that article structured and, and I think you hit on a really delicate point of how much do you layer another decision making body yeah. in the middle of all Well this. particularly I think our three towns are similar in that most of us feel if we have an issue we can go right to the administrator or right to the school board and talk to them about it. I'm not sure this would be, I, I don't know I guess how this would be accepted. Well I think one of is it all right no, I, yeah. I, one of the reasons that I thought that it looked useful in the in the uh, templates that I was looking at, and I feel it might be useful, is exactly the point of how does the public now interact with this new district? Yeah. Well, there are three people in Marlboro who are elected by you to advocate for the things that you would like to see. They don't have the authority. They may be paper tiger, but they're a person to whom you can go, other than the principal in the school, mm -hmm. to say you know, I've got a concern or whatever, uh, other than going to to the board of the entire district. Right. So so I don't think it muddies it. I think, um, I, I don't, don't know. know, the way I visualize yeah. it working is actually filtering down a little bit so that people feel they got somebody they can actually go and talk yeah. to. Yeah. As opposed to the other three elected board members who are already on the board. Right, but yeah. they're part of a larger district right. and they... They have different concerns. Yeah, they may not advocate for, uh, for you know, for the individuals within right. the school because they're part of a larger board. Or they may have to compromise to get something yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, this is just a question. I noticed that there are 10 members on this larger board. Is that a problem? That it's an equal number? I mean, most school well, boards? No, because <laughs> most of the time a chairman on a small board, which I think is under 12, usually only votes to either create or break a tie. And then again, when you have a larger board of 10, you know, having all 10 show up is a pretty rare occasion. I don't know if we've had all 10 at one of our meetings yet. I mean, this board, this group is the same makeup that, that Dan's mm -hmm. suggesting. We haven't had everybody at a meeting yet, have we? And so. it, this is only just a thought, but if we're going to keep it proportional, it's either going to be this or twice as big, which is still an even number, so... And there's, I mean, we actually, there was quite a bit of discussion to get here at the Wyndham Central level because, you know, we could have gone five and given, like, two or two, uh, person had a vote and a half. I think on the Wyndham, on the other Wyndham Central one, doesn't Wyndham, didn't they split their people up? It was, or? It was like a, a bicameral activity where they had kind of like a Senate and a House <laughs> <laughs> to represent the interests of the... The tiniest school district, and but that's a concern about from smaller schools too. Yeah, because there's less representation. We all good on that, Dan? Thank you again. Parking lot. The only thing I put in here was um, I thought since John is um, was hired by the high school study group or the pre K through twelve study group, he could take um, give a brief update. They have met and uh, decided on their meetings. That's basically what they've done. So so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we started charging forward. So we did. And their meeting dates, there's a paper that went out um, that the showed their meeting, meeting dates. Meeting dates are set as well. You already you do have that? I think it came in through. I, I think, yeah. yeah. I, is that the one that was a Google Doc? No, I thought I didn't I send it through with the... Um, 
Or Bill might have sent it too, right? Oh, we'll see. Like Randy probably wouldn't get it if Bill sent it. Yeah, there was something that came from. Okay, let me make yeah. sure that goes out. Yeah. Um, so Doesn't matter. I'm not going. <laughs> no, the, the one of the reason I put Jamaican Vernon make five, so it was to remind me that last meeting I said even if Leland and Gray, the Leland and Gray group or the pre K through 12 doesn't work, you know we could still maybe go to the state and say we're an alternative structure. We don't need it. But the law also says, or you combine four schools. So, excuse me, so if we got Jamaica or Vernon to come into this group of three, that would make four. That would make us a, a one of their. Makes us viable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stand alone. Yeah. We could just stand by ourselves. Yeah, we're not doing all this Even though we wouldn't hit the numbers in terms of students. But it's, yeah. it's not only students, it's number of districts, too. So there's, there's a, and I didn't bring that up last meeting. I just wanted to correct that. What? What's that? Yeah, well, Go ahead. I, I just I, I want to I'm really we're we are working to comply with the law but the law is about opportunities for kids so that's why it's on the top of the page. I know that but every you know when I hear like okay if we do four districts we're okay well as long as we've made opportunities right. for I'm kids. just I'm, I'm not, I'm arguing not saying with it's you. a way to do it I'm, I'm not, not saying it's going to work or there may yeah. even be it I'm yeah. just saying that also is what the law states yes I am aware you voted on it. Next future meetings, <laughs> September 22nd. You wear that one for. No, you know what you have to. You don't always vote on everything you want to vote on. September 22nd, October 13th, October 27th, November 10th. So we're going to be in Dover on the 22nd. Um, and then we come back to Marlboro and then go to Dover and then to Wardsboro. So we got Dover, Marlboro, because Wardsboro got two. What's it? Dover's the next one? Yep. Yeah. Marlboro, Dover, and then Wardsboro oh, on November 10th. Everybody good with that? You're moving too fast. Marlboro, Dover, Wardsboro, and what's the last uh, one? No, so Dover to 22nd, oh. Marlboro the 13th. Oh. Yeah. October 27th, we'll be back in Dover. Oh. And then we'll all have had two. Oh. And we'll start over again in Wardsboro <laughs> on November 10th. Okay. <laughs> October 22nd? 27. October 27. Oh, sorry. 27. September 22nd. I got that one. October. Well, it's 6.30. Oops. Yeah. I'm sorry. Is that right? Sorry. You ever been to Dover? <laughs> it's a scary place. <laughs> Especially when you get there in September and there'll be snow on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> no. We had a principal candidate pull in and turn around and never even come back. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> bro. I swear to God. Wow. Yeah, we laughed. Well, they didn't like that. Man. If you have a job, you've been here all winter. I just keep it to Anita because she's going to start. Okay, I, I think we've we got a lot of stuff accomplished tonight. I think next meeting is when we start to the nuts and bolts because all I really see is I, I see introductions, I see approved minutes, I see final communication plan, and then I'm looking at the questions the and starting on the articles. That I've got several questions that we're going to get answered. Are you okay with me starting to draft those so you can give us something what you're here for? Okay, yes, yes. I just didn't want to preempt you wanting to write. Can I ask a question about the open meeting law? Yeah. Um, can the three can can we as individuals be talking back and forth? I mean, can I can I meet with Dan or meet with Selena? Yes. Outside. Because you're not a majority. Group? Yes. Okay. Of this Thank board. You. Of this board. Of this yes. group. Yeah. All right. And Thank one you. of the yeah. things is what I'm doing is when like I, I asked for a straw poll and sent the email. I keep that so that I bring it to the meeting so that we like. All the stuff that went around about um, the, the communications piece, I have all that. So if anybody wants it, I've right. got the, the copies, the hard copies. Thank you. Anybody else? Are you all good with minutes? Anything we need to catch you up? Or what happens to this us? committee the day after town meeting day? Mm -hmm. Once we once we finalize and we agree mm -hmm. to articles to present to the the boards and the towns, we are done. We right. no longer exist. And what's your deadline? What just we need to have stuff to the towns by January, middle of January, January 22nd. But we would go for public meetings. Yeah, we'll have to have information. Right, but once we're all done and it's mm -hmm. given to the towns, it's all so the town meeting. Who, who we'll takes it over at that point? Where, Nobody takes it over. No, but who's going to present it to the town for the vote? The, the, it's an Australian ballot, so there's 
we will have had public meetings, we hope, before that point. Well, we're still a committee. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the committee, so it really doesn't So end we'll be a committee through February, basically. Yeah. yeah. Sometime in February. Cause what if it gets turned down? Pardon? What if it gets turned down? Well, then everybody's on their own. And would you not want the PR commitment to extend to at least up to the day of posting the outcomes of these votes? Or does that not pertain? That's something the towns would have to do? The under? towns will do that, I think. So you wouldn't, the PR... No, because once it's done, it's done. Because once we vote on it, that's why there's this new board. That's why we vote on that board at that time. It's not ours. It's not the school boards anymore. It's not Wyndham Central's. It's whatever that new group that's that got meeting. elected. That's town mm -hmm. meeting. Yeah. I know. So the last post on whatever day in will be, February... Don't forget to vote today. No, the last post in March will be don't forget to vote today. Right, and from now on, if you want information about what happened, go to your towns. Yeah. Got it. I think it's a big deal. I don't think people are going to be, you know, waking up the next morning and... And Sorry, need a, needing a Facebook post to, to pique their curiosity. Yeah. I think they're all going to No, but you always have to think what if. Yeah. So I yeah. just play a little bit of extra what ifs. Yeah. Thank you. Because yeah. yeah. you don't know the media might yeah. come back to the site looking for information. And that would be another question. If you create a blog site, do you want to post it? The blog site is going to be terminated 365 days after the town meeting or... Do you want it to be left up for all eternity, or? Well, I mean, I think it should probably be created with Wyndham. It's, we're talking about a Wyndham Central address, right? So it would. I think become, you guys are working on that. That was our agreement. So right, yeah. that's, right that's yeah. something I think the consultant will figure that out. Those are the details. Yeah. And you know, it wouldn't hurt though for it to stay out there later. You know, be available just because. No, no, there will be for no other reason than if there's a reconsideration though. or historic, yeah. right? Yeah. And then for history. Okay. I make a motion to adjourn. I was going to commend both Lucy for showing up here shortly after uh, getting the new yes. and Rick yeah. for doing a great job of, of getting the uh, agenda out and keeping us on track. So yes. thank you very much. So now we have a motion to adjourn. We have a second by Randy. All those favors say aye. 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 Okay. Dwight, you can't leave yet. No, I know.